Silence all stem. Good morning, Your Honour. I understand uh, Mr O'Brien wishes to see uh, leave to appear. Good morning, Mr O'Brien. Good morning, Your Honour, uh, Commissioner. Uh, um, I seek Your Honour's leave, uh, the Commissioner's leave indeed, to appear for ALA, uh, ALC, the father of ALA, and the mother of ALA, ALD. Yes. No, no one wants to say anything in opposition to that application. That application for leave is granted, Mr O'Brien. Thank you, Your Honour. And, uh, Mr. Murray, uh, council also wishes to seek uh, leave. Your Honour, Corrigan appearing for Mr. Murray, if I may, in this matter. Yes, thank you, Mr. Corrigan. I think your have you made a previous application with I have respect made to your claim? Leave has been granted. And leave's been granted. Thank you. Thank you. I call Margaret Furlong. Ms Furlong, would you prefer to take the oath on the Bible or the affirmation without the use of the Bible? The oath on the Bible. All right. If you could just take the Bible, please, and raise it in your right hand. And repeat after me, I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. In this Royal Commission. In this Royal Commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the and truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. If you just replace the Bible and take a seat right where you are, please. Long. I wonder if you could state your full name for the Royal Commission, please. My name is Margaret Grace Furlong. And uh, you've given your address to the Royal Commission, I understand. I have. And uh, your current occupation is what? I'm a teacher. And uh, you've given a witness statement to the Royal Commission dated the 8th of <coughs> October 2014, is that right? I have, yes. And uh, do you have any changes to make to that witness statement? I would like to add something down to my statement. All right. Just before you do, um, why don't we deal with the witness statement and then we'll come to that. Okay. Um, do you say that the witness statement you've given the Royal Commission is true and correct to the best of your knowledge? It is true and correct. Yes, I tend to the witness statement. Eighteen point zero zero one eight. Ms. Furlong, perhaps if you want to add those uh, those matters, we, you can do so after you've read out your statement. Would that be would that suit you? That's fine. Yes. Um. I wonder if you could read your statement. It'll come up on the screen. Um, if you could start from um, paragraph two, please. In order to answer the Royal Commission's requests in this statement, I refer to privileged, confidential and sensitive matters, for example, the identity of victims of child sexual abuse. I do so under compulsion and I ask the Royal Commission to deal with such matters with appropriate sensitivity and redaction. To assist with preparing the statement, the college lawyers have shown me a draft police statement in the night in my name, dated 21st of December 1999. The police statement was prepared by Sergeant Trevor Smith after an interview with me at Williamstown Police Station. Following the interview, Sergeant Smith telephoned me, having prepared the, the draft police statement to confirm some details. He read parts of it to me over the phone. I was not shown or asked to sign or asked to provide approval for the content of the police statement. While the substance of this draft statement is broadly correct, some details, for example, some of the dates are incorrect. I have a clear recollection of my time at the college back 
1987, where, this is, where there is inconsistency between the draft police statement and this witness statement, this witness statement is correct. I commenced as a primary teacher at, college, at the college in April 1987, age 23. I had a composite grade 2, 3 and 4. In 1988, I had a composite class, grade 3, 4 and 5. And in 1989, I had a composite class, grade 3, 4. In 1990, I moved to the secondary teaching at the college and did not have significant involvement in the primary school. I taught at the college for a total of about 11.5 years until mid-1998 when I took voluntary redundancy. I rejoined the college staff in January 2008 as a teacher. My current roles are Special Education Coordinator, Secondary Maths Coordinator and Secondary Maths Teacher. My, my son attends the college. In 1987 to 1989, Kenneth Sanderlands was teaching the grades below me. I first became aware of the allegations against Kenneth Sanderlands in 1987. AVG, AGV, was in my class. On one occasion in 1987, Kenneth Sanderlands spoke with me alleging that AGV had been misbehaving by pulling her pants down in an old tram that was on the college property. He wanted to speak with AGV about it. I told Kenneth Sandlins that it was more appropriate the mat that I discuss the matter with, a <clears throat> with AGV as I was her classroom teacher. When I discussed the matter with AGV, she responded with words to the effect that what Kenneth Sandlin had said was not true. She said she had not been misbehaving and that Kenneth Sandlin had touched her in the tram. I recall that AGV with reference to touching at the time appeared to mean that she was saying something inappropriate had occurred. I was uncertain at the time whether the allegation was sex had a sexual aspect to it. Due to what AGV told me and my understanding that it involved an allegation of some kind of inappropriate behaviour, I then discussed the allegation with Ken Sandlin, Kenneth Sandlins. He responded with words to the effect that AGV had made up the allegation due to her anger at being caught behaving inappropriately on the tram. Due to my understanding that AGV had alleged inappropriate behaviour by Kenneth Sandlins, I then <coughs> reported the allegation to the principal, Neil Brooks. He responded with words to the effect, leave it with me. Following that time, I observed that AGV increasingly wanted to spend more time with me. For example, she would follow me closely when I was on yard duty. She did not make any further allegations to me about Ken Sanderlands. In 1988, AGA, who was in Grade 3 in Ken Sanderlands class, also made allegations to me about Ken Sanderlands touching her. In 1990, I spoke with AGA's teacher, Cathy Tilly, who stated to me that she did not believe that there could be anything untoward in the behaviour that AGA had alleged about Kenneth Sandlands. I recall that during this period, Kenneth Sandlands would sometimes send students to, um, to AGA's classroom to fetch her. I was aware of this and following AGA's conversation with me, I encouraged Cathy Tilly not to allow AGA to go to Kent Sandlin's classroom. In 1988, I had reported AGA's complaint to the Principal Neil Rooks. I recall that he acknowledged what I had told him. I had also asked Neil Rooks if AGA could be transferred into my class. Neil Rooks told me this was not possible. AGA was in grade four the following year, 18, 1989, and was in my class. AGA repeated grade four the following year, 1990, in Cathy Tiller's class. I recall four occasions in 1989 
there were requests for AGA to attend Kent Sandlin's classroom as follows. I recall that sometime in 1989, Kenneth Sandlins came to my classroom door wanting to see AGA. He said that AGA had pulled her pants down on the bus on the way to school and that he wanted to speak to her about it. I told Kenneth Sandlins that I would look into it and get back to him. I then spoke with AGA's mother who told me that on the day Kenneth Sandlins referred to, AGA was not, had not been at school as she had a medical appointment and did not attend school on that day. On two occasions in 1989, Kevin Sandlin sent, sent students from his class to my class to collect AGA. There was either no reason given or I did not accept the reason was valid. I do not recall which one. I did not allow her to go on either occasion. On one occasion in 1989, Kenneth Sandlin sent a student from his classroom to collect AGA. The reason given appeared to be legitimate, so her let her go. However, I, assisted, I insisted that she was accompanied by another student. From 1989, when AGA came into my class, she became very attached to me and would spend a lot of time in my classroom during recess. I recall that in 1988, a student who was not in my class, AGB, told me she had requested to the principal, Neil Rooks, that she be transferred from Kenneth Sandlin's class to mine. I asked her why she wanted to, I asked her why she wanted to transfer out of Kenneth Sandlin's class and she said words to the effect that Kenneth Sandlin's did bad things. Her request to transfer classes was denied. In 1989, I was on yard duty and found AGW crying. She said that Kenneth Sandlins had touched her when she was younger. She said that she had started having nightmares about this. I told AGW that I would have to pass this information on to the principal. AGW pleaded with me not to tell the principal. However, I did report the matter to the principal, Neil Brooks. I recall that Neil Rooks acknowledged what I had told him. Please scroll up, please. I do not have first-hand knowledge of investigations decisions made by the college or anyone else in relation to allegations against Kenneth Sandlins. What I observed is that Kenneth Sandlins continued to teach until he left the college on the grounds of his failing eyesight. A teacher's aide was put into his classroom in the year before he left. I recall that the reason given for this was Kenneth Sandlins' failing eyesight. I do not have first-hand knowledge of decisions made by the college or anyone else in relation to the victims of Kenneth Sandlins, including compensation or redress. I continued to be involved with AJ and her family for some time after she left the college. I am aware that she sued Kenneth Sandlins in the college and the matter was settled between the parties. As I set out above, I reported the complaints of AGV, AGA and AGW to the Principal Neil Rooks. These are the only allegations which were made to me. On each occasion, I expected that the Principal Neil Rooks would deal with the allegations in a careful and professional manner. I did not hear anything from Neil Rooks or anyone else as to what was being done about it. No one in authority ever spoke to me about what I should do or what was happening in relation to the reports I had made. I was ne never asked to write anything down. As far as I recall, at the time the allegations were made to me, there were no policies or procedures of the college in relation to the detection, investigation, reporting and response to complaints of child sexual abuse. I believe that mandatory reporting for teachers was introduced in 1983. I am aware that the college later developed formal policies and procedures relating to allegations of child sex abuse. 
Sorry, Ms. Furlong, I think you said 1983. Oh, sorry, 1993. Thank you. I am aware that the college later stated, formal, later developed formal policies and procedures relating to the allegations of child sexual abuse. The practice I followed in the absence of any guidance from anyone was to report to the principal. Now, you said earlier that um, there was something additional you wanted to add to your statement. Yes, I would like to. Yes. Please go ahead. When, when I was a child of eight years old, I was sexually abused myself by a neighbour. My family did become aware of it. The police were called, the man involved was charged, and it was taken to court. The man who sexually abused me was given a suspended sentence and was allowed to live two doors down from me for the rest of my childhood. I went into working at Northside Christian College with no belief in the legal system to deal fairly with the victims of child abuse. As a result of that belief, I put my trust in people that I thought would do the right thing, people that I, got, that I classed as godly men to do the right thing. However, These men did not do the right thing and they did not support myself and other staff members in dealing with, with these allegations or anything else. Rather than that, we were terrified and frightened to say anything about anything that was going on in the college for fear of reprisal from, from Pastor Dennis Smith. And this was the environment in which I was working. My statement is true and correct. There is no, no, no doubting any of the facts that are true, but it does not reflect the pain and the anguish in which we as teachers lived, the fear in which we lived, and the fear that I lived from my own pain and from the bullying and harassment that I received to not speak out at the college. Under, under Pastor Dennis Smith. Thank you. Thank you. If I can just clarify a couple of things that are in what you've just said then. Um, you re referred to, lastly, I think, bullying and harassment in a particular atmosphere of fear at Northside Christian College. And I will come to some of the detail in a moment. But just generally speaking, how was that indicated to you? How did you come to um, be fearful of those who were in control at uh, Northside Christian Centre? I will say I was fearful of Pastor Smith. I want well, to make that clear that it why was Pastor was, Smith. Why was that? What, what had caused you to be fearful of him? From the very first day that I was employed at the college, we were told that the college was a ministry arm of the church and that we were under Pastor Smith and under God, under him. We were told things like, no one in this college shall ever join the union. I will not have the union spirit in this college and anyone that does, does so will instantly be dismissed. Who, who told you that? Pastor Smith. And what was the occasion on which you told him? It was just a, it was a meeting with staff members. I, I, I'm not sure what the context of why he said that. that he was that when you were at the junior college or yes, somewhere? Yes, it was. And was it announced at a staff meeting or a one-on-one one one situation? This was at a staff meeting, yes. To a number of staff members yes. from Northside Christian yes. College? Uh, Pastor Smith controlled everything in the college from our pays to the churches we attended to what we were allowed to wear. Female staff were not allowed to wear trousers to work or to church. 
because the church was considered it was considered to be part of our ministry. We were not allowed to discuss. Every staff member had a different pay level, not according to a scale, according to what Pastor Smith decided for us. And we were not allowed to discuss this with anybody. What about? He, sorry, go on. He didn't. He kept everything in relation to the college was kept secret and private. Sorry. All right. Well, um, we'll come to come to. Um, some of the matters in your statement now, if you don't mind. Um, you start at paragraph 13. If that could come up from your statement, please. <coughs> so you started at uh, Northside Christian College in 1987, in about April, is that That's right? correct. Um, and... How soon after um, you starting did the um, allegations about uh, Mr Sanderland involving AGV come to your attention? From memory, it was towards the end of the year, in the second half of 1987. Right. Um, now... <clears throat> In uh, paragraph 15, you refer to... So the, the circumstance seems to be that AGV came to you... Sorry, I'll withdraw that. That Mr Sanderlands came to you and, and said that AGV had been misbehaving. Yes. And you then spoke with AGV alone. Yes. And uh, she said the opposite yes. to her. And there was... In what she said, there was some reference to him touching her... In the uh, in the tram located on the college property, is yes, that right? That's correct. And what was the nature of the touching? Her her allegation was no more specific than that he had touched her. Um, you say that um, you interpreted that to mean something inappropriate had occurred. Yes. What caused you to reach that conclusion? How distressed, AJ. AGV was when she was telling me things, how strongly she denied that she had done anything inappropriate, how much she wanted to be heard. And you say you weren't, uh, it wasn't clear in your mind whether there was some sort of sexual complexion that could be put upon the, uh, upon the allegation, is that right? At the time, I say that at the time I was not not clear. All right. Did you later come to change your mind about that? All I can say is that now I, I believe that it was at the. I don't know when I came to actually, probably in hindsight of the other allegations, that I realised that, and in all likelihood, I believe that there was secular element to it. Then I just was. I didn't want to believe that this was happening. Now, um, you went and spoke to Mr Sanderlands before you took it to the principal, is that right? Yes. And why, why was that? Why did you want to um, put the allegation to him? I don't know why I wanted to put the allegations to him. I just wanted, I wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, was it in your mind that you would then take it to the principal after that? I always intended to take it to the principal. Now, you say you then did go and have a conversation with the principal, Neil Rooks, is that right? That's correct. And what did you say to him? I told Neil Rooks what, one, what Ken Sandlins had alleged, and I told Neil Rooks the victim's response. I told Neil Rooks that I believe the victim had something inappropriate had happened to the victim. Um, do you recall the words that you used? Yes. What were they? Okay, leave it with me. And but in, when you informed him of the allegations, what did you say to him about the allegation? Sorry. I'm you sorry. said a moment ago that. Um, you believe that the victim had something inappropriate had happened to the victim. Were they the words that you used? 
No, I used the word the, the victim had, had told me that she had been touched by Kenneth Sanders. And um, Mr Rooks said to you, leave it, to, leave it with me. Yes. Um, and did you hear anything further about that particular allegation? No, I did not. Um, and uh, this AGV was a child in your class? She was, yes. And if there had been some interview with that child, um, would you have expected to have known about such an interview? Definitely. Um, if the child's parents were informed, would you have expected to have been told about that? Definitely. Um, what did you understand the process at the school was in 1987 for dealing with such allegations? I had no idea what the process was. I had, when I had started at the college in April, I had been given no induction into the college. I had just been thrown into a class and told, go for it, cope. No one had ever explained any policies, any procedures, any any anything that I could have actually gone to or, or gone back to in these situations. I didn't know. Um, did you did you yourself ever approach AGV's parents to tell them about um, um, the, the touching incident? I didn't. Uh, do you receive any guidance from Mr Rooks about uh, about doing that, speaking to the parents about that? None whatsoever. Do you receive any guidance or assistance from um, Pastor Smith about doing that? None so? whatsoever. Right. Do you receive any communication at all about this matter after you provided to Mr Rooks? Nothing at all. I was I never was never asked to write anything down. I was never asked to sign anything, and I never had any feedback from anybody. Um, in March and April 1987, uh, sorry, withdraw that. You started in April of 1987. That's correct. Yes. Were you aware that there was an investigation going on at that stage into allegations of Mr. Sanderland's touching um, a child by the name of AGB? I was not aware. I, I've seen that on the transcripts for this, and it was the first time that I knew anything about that. All right, and do you know, um, when I use the pseudonym AGB, do you know who I'm referring to? No, I don't. There's a, a card in front of you. And you'll see under the North Side Witnesses, the second name is AGB. Uh, or the fourth, depending on which side you have. OK, yes, I've seen that. Yes. Right. So I ask you the question again: Were you aware in, in about April 1987 of investigation into Mr. Sandland's concerning touching of AGB? I had no idea. Um, later in, um, sorry, I withdraw that. Um, in April of 1987, certain guidelines were set by the school <laughs> for Mr. Sandland's to comply with. Were you aware in April 1987 about those guidelines? No idea. Were you told later in 1987 that there no, were such not. guidelines? No, I was not. When you spoke to Mr Rooks about the allegations involving AGV, um, did he mention to you that there that Mr Sanderlands had guidelines about the, such no, behaviour? No, he did not. I'll show you a document. It's in the Northside Tender Bundle at tab 9. If that could come up on the screen, please. Take a moment to read through that to yourself. Read that. Uh, is that a document you've seen before? Again, I've seen it on the Royal Commission's site into do and the documents listed there. I had not seen it prior to that point. All right. It was not shown to you uh, during your time at Northside Christian College? No, it was not. Now, if we go down in, back to your statement... Um, just 
about to ask you some questions starting from paragraph 19. But before I do so, <laughs> in 1987, was there ever a staff meeting where the allega allegations against uh, Mr Sanderlands were discussed amongst the staff? No, there was not. When you arrived at Northside Christian College, were, were there any rumours that you heard from um, other teachers about Mr Sanderlands? When I first arrived, no. After a few of the allegations, I did hear some rumours, yes. Yes. Um, and when did you hear those rumours, can you recall? Sometime in that period. I'm not quite sure when. When you say the period, the period that you were te teaching at the primary yes. school? And then I think you say in 1990 you started teaching in the secondary school. That's correct, yes. yes. So in that period, 1987 to 1989. Yes. So who did, who did you hear the rumours from? I really can't remember. It was just general, general chit-chat type conversation. I, I can't remember who I heard rumours from. Um, now... Uh, uh, you may be aware that uh, on on Friday, Ms. Fret Ms. Fretton, who was previously known as AGA, said she was happy not to have a pseudonym for the purpose of the Royal Commission. And um, unfortunately, when we were going through your statement earlier, um, the old version yes. came up. Um, so uh, um, we are referring to AGA as uh, Ms. Fretton. Yes. All right. Now you set out your evidence about Ms. Fretton from paragraphs 19 onwards. And you say that um, in 1988 you had um, a further complaint about uh, Mr Sanderlands from Ms Fretton, is that right? That is correct. Um, and what did she tell you? Again, the word touching was used and she told me that she had been touched by Ken Sandlands. And did you work out what she meant by the word touching? I knew exactly what she meant, yes. But did she, was she any more specific about where he had touched her? From memory, no. Um, but you interpreted it in, in a particular way? Yes. And what way was that? That there had been some sort of sexual touching on Miss Fredden. And how did you come to that conclusion? The amount of distress she was in and looking back at the prior student who had disclosed to me. Um, and I think by, in 1988 she was still in Mr Sanderland's class? That is correct. Um, in 1989, she came to your class. That is correct, yes. Now, now you, um, you spoke to Mr Rooks a second time about Mr Sanderland? I did, yes. And you told him that um, uh, of the allegations that um, Emma Fretton had made about Mr Sanderland? I did, yes. And what did he say? He really didn't say very much at all. He just... He acknowledged that I had spoken to him, but he didn't really say much at all about what he was going to do. Where did, where did the conversation take place, can I ask? The conversation in relation to Emma took place in the staff room, just in the corner of the staff room, where basically I, I bailed him up and said I wanted to talk to him about, about this. Yes. And um, did, um, did he ask you to put it in writing no, for him? No, he did not. I was never asked to put anything in writing. All right. Um, did he ask you to contact the parents? No, he did not. Um, did he ask you to uh, take any steps to interview um, Miss Fretton at greater length? No, he did not. Are you aware of what he did after that with the allegation that you gave to him? I don't know what he did with that. Did you receive any further communication no, I did from not. him? What about from Pastor Dennis Smith? No, I did not. Um, <clears throat> then you say that there were four occasions in 1989 involving Miss Fretton where uh, Mr Sanderlands had uh, sent a message, if you like, through to you 
for uh, Emma Fretton to come to him. That's correct. Is that right? For that I can remember, yes. Was that usual or unusual? For a teacher to send a message to another teacher to have a student come around? It wasn't generally unusual, no. Um, in the first of those, uh, Mr Sanderlands actually came to your classroom door and said something about Miss Fretton pulling her pants down on the bus on the way to school. That's correct. Right. And you didn't make uh, Miss Fretton available immediately for him to uh, punish her or speak to her about that, did you? I did not. Why was that? Well, for one reason, I felt that, that as her class teacher and as a female class teacher, if there was this anything like this coming up, it, should, it would be better that I spoke to her and I found out what had happened rather than a, a male dealing with that. So that was my, my first thing. But, but secondly, in light of, of the past situation with, with AGB, where I had, had, I suppose, similar information from him, I, I was dubious of his intentions. Um, and I, I presume as a result of having spoken with um, Emma Fritton's mother and establishing that she had, in fact, not been on the bus that Mr Sanderlands indicated she had been on. Yes. Um, what did you do as a result of that? I can't recall what I did. In any event, you didn't, um, you didn't refer Emma Fretton to go and speak with Mr Sanderlands? I didn't let her go to Mr Sanderlands, no. All right. Uh, did you indicate to Emma's mother that... Um, that there was something odd about what Mr Sanderlands had said? I, I, all I can remember is that I told Emma's mother what Mr Sanderlands had reported to me and asked her had, had Emma been on the bus because from memory our record showed that Emma hadn't been at school that day as well. So... I wanted to get to the bottom of whether she had even, if whether there could have been any truth to this report. All right, and then there are further three three occasions where requests were made by Mr. Sanderlands to you to have um, Emma Fretton come to his class. Is that right? That is correct. And what was the reason that you decided not to send um, her there on the first two occasions? I can't remember whether I didn't, he didn't give a reason why he wanted her or whether I didn't think the reason was good enough. But for one of those two reasons, I, I would not let her go. <laughs> and um, then on the, the fourth occasion, you allowed her to go because you thought the reason was legitimate, but you had her accompanied by another student. Is that right? That is correct. And why did you have her accompanied by another student? Because I was worried for Emma. Um, seeing as this appears to have happened on four occasions in 1989, did you raise this matter with Mr Rooks at all? I cannot remember whether I raised it with him or not. But, sorry, could I just say that there were often sort of very quick, impromptu conversations and different things were said, and so that's why I can't recall whether I, whether I said something to him along the lines of... Um, Ken Sandlands asked for Emma again or something like that because there were never formal discussions and that's why it's a little hazy to me. Um, in any event, Mr Rooks doesn't appear... Sorry, I'll draw that. Did Mr Rooks ever raise those, uh, those requests from Mr Sandlands to you to have Emma Fretton come to his classroom um, at some later stage? Sorry, I misunderstand the question. Sorry, I, I think it was wrong, poorly phrased. Um, did Mr Rooks ever come back to you and, and uh, discuss with you these requests from Mr Sanders? No, he did not. Um, now, you had, there was an, um, also a student by the name of AGB who, um, in 1988, so I'm sorry to take you back to 1988, but just quickly, paragraphs 26 to 28 of your statement, 
um, there was a request from her to you that she be transferred into your class. Do you recall that? I do, yes. And she said that the this was because Kenneth Sanderlands did bad things. That is correct. Did you establish what that meant? No, I did not. Is there any particular reason you didn't get a bit more information about uh, that issue from her? I think because I knew what she was talking about. All right. Now, AGW. Uh, you received a, a further allegation this time from AGW in the in the playground that she had been touched by Kenneth Sandlands. Is that right? That is correct. And um, did you establish whether that occurred was occurring in 1989 or had it occurred in some previous year? No, she said that he had touched her when she was in his grade, and he only ever taught the younger classes that she had been brought up because she was now having nightmares in relation to it. And AGW, was she in your class at that no, stage? No, she was not. Um, now, you told AGW that she wanted to take the matter to the principal. Yes. And even though she was not happy with that, uh, you did report it to Mr Brooks. Is I that did. right? Yes. And what happened as a result of that uh, report to him? Nothing. Right. Um, again, you've said that um, the allegation was that AGW had been touched by Kenneth Sandlands. Yes. Do you recall what you said to Mr Rooks? I said to Mr Rooks, for the, from the best of my memory, something along the lines of, there has been another allegation and AGW has told me that she was touched by Ken Sanderlands. Um, and did you indicate to him whether that touching was sexual or otherwise? Again, from memory, I believe I, I said I believed that it was sexual. And what happened as a result of um, that communication to Mr Rooks? Did you hear any further? about what had happened? Nothing further happened from Mr Rooks. I went back to AGW, but she she was adamant she was not going forward and she was not going to come forward and she was not going to say anything further. Did you speak to AGW's parents at all about the allegation? No, I did not. So by this stage, so 1989 was your last year in uh, in the primary section of Northside That's Christian correct. College, is that right? That's correct. Um, had you heard during that period, so those three years, almost three years that you were there at Northside Christian College, of um, um, any concerns raised by either Pastor Dennis Smith or by the principal, Neil Rooks, about Mr Sanderlands and his touching of children? I heard nothing from either of those men. Now, um, in 1991, you then started teaching in the secondary level at Northside Christian College? That's correct. And that's a different building? The college is, is very small, and the buildings are all on the one, one um, piece of land. So it wasn't like a huge school where there was one part and another part. It really was still all together. But when I began teaching there, it's, it's, it was like I had no contact with... I had no further involvement with the primary and was not told anything in relation to anything with the primary school. Were you aware of um, um, allegations that arose in 1991 <laughs> and 1992 against Mr Sanderland? I was not. Were you told of any investigations by, for example, Kerry Lovell? I was not officially told. Uh, Kerry Lovell um, was in a prayer group with me on the, the campus and 
I remember she was not specific, but I remember that she did tell us in her prayer group to pray for her as she was dealing with issues related to a staff member and some, some improprieties. Did she indicate who that was? She didn't. Did you guess? Yes, I did. And um, what happened with that process? To I your did knowledge. not hear any more after that. I, right. I don't. There was no announcement. There was in, no announcement. In, in 1991 or 1992? There was no announcement at all. All right. Um, <coughs> there is some, some evidence that, um, um, that um, a person was placed in Mr Sanderland's class in 1992, perhaps even as early as 1991, to monitor his behaviour in the classroom. Were you aware of that? I was aware of that. How did you become aware of that? I, I know the person that was placed in the class. And what was the qualification of that person? The, the person placed in class was a teacher's aide. But she was placed in the class... All, well, all that we were told was that she was placed in the classroom because of Ken Sandlin's failing eyesight, that he was finding it more difficult to teach and she was there to assist him with his with his dealings with the class. Now, uh, do you recall when that started? I know it was in the year before he ended. I don't know when it started. And um, are you aware as to how frequently she was, in the, she was in the classroom with him? To the best of my knowledge, she was always in the classroom with him. Um, and... <clears throat> Um, you say you, that um, he continued to teach until he left the school on the grounds of his failing eyesight. So I, do I take it from that that you knew that at the end of 1992 he ceased teaching at um, Northside Christian College? I was, I was still teaching at the college at that time. I was at, his, at the final assembly where he was sent off. I was at the assembly where, where parents and staff were told that he was taking five years extended sick leave and if his eyesight should improve, he would be coming back. Who told the, who told the meeting about that? This, the this was at the assembly. It was announced from the front front. I can't remember whether it was Neil Walks or Pastor Smith. It was one of those two men. Um, so was that the extent of your knowledge as to why Mr Sanderland had, had ceased teaching at uh, Northside Christian College? That's the extent of the knowledge of what was told, yes. Were you aware of any other investigations that had gone on in 1991 and 1992 into uh, his behaviour towards children? I was not aware of any investigations. Were you aware of any allegations of, for example, him showing um, pornography to children? No, I was not. Were you aware of um, sex education classes that no, he was, was said not. to have taken with children? No. Um, Were you aware of allegations, and I'll take you to the pseudonym list again, again, uh, this is um, AGC, so it's about halfway down in the alphabetical surname list. Yeah. You see the name AGC? Yes, I... Yes. Are you aware of allegations that arose in 1993 um, from that boy who had been at Northside Christian College? I was not at the time aware of the allegations, no. You, you since became aware as part of the criminal or civil proceedings? And this, this family were members of my church at the time. Did they speak to you about...? They did not directly speak to me, no. Yes, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr Pickett. Ms. McGlinchey. Mrs. Furlong, my name is Ms. McGlinchey and I appear for Emma Fretton in this, this matter. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Mrs. Furlong, uh, do I understand your statement uh, to mean that in 1987, when you first started at the college, it was your first year of teaching? That is correct. All right. And you were, I think, 23 years I was, that's and you had uh, finished a, a teacher's training course, is that correct? Um, I had a, a three-year qualification at that time, yes. All right. 
As part of your first year of teaching, were you provided with any supervision? None at all. All right. So there's no, nothing independent to assist you in that first year of your teaching? Nothing at all. Who was your direct supervisor at the school? I assume it was Mr Rooks, but I don't know. All right. Was there no avenues um, uh, that you could go back to in terms of um, talking about issues as they come up in your... There was nobody. Thank you. When uh, Emma Threaten came to you in 1988 and you reported her allegation to Mr Rooks, this was in fact the second conversation you'd had with Mr Rooks about a very similar allegation from 1987. Yes. Did you raise that with him, that this was a second allegation of a similar nature? Yes, I did. And what did you say to Mr Rooks about that? To the best of my memory, uh, some, along the lines of, I've again been told something about Ken Sanderlin's. And what did Mr Rook say about that? He didn't, he didn't seem to acknowledge that. That, that. that in fact this was a second allegation? Mm -hmm. Did you tell Mr Rooks that in fact Mr Sanderlin's had made a false allegation about Emma? Well, I'm, I'm referring to that Mr Sanderlands had said that Emma yeah. had pulled her pants down. You'd uh, investigated that with Emma's mother and found out that that was incorrect. I really can't remember whether I did or not. Now, uh, clearly from your evidence today, by the time that Mr Sanderlands was attempting to take Emma out of your class, you were worried about Emma. I was, yes. And you had fairly strong suspicions that he had not very good motives for wanting to take Emma out of the class. Yes. All right. Did you consider any other options other than going to Mr Rooks? I considered them. I didn't know what to do. I was... <laughs> Hindsight's a wonderful thing, and I, I wish, I wish now I had gone to the police. I wish I had have contacted Emma's mother. I wish I had done something else. But I was an intimidated and inexperienced and gullible person at the time, and what I did was to try to the best of my ability to protect Emma at the school. Thank you, Mrs. Fellow. Nothing else. Nothing, Mr. <coughs> You're Mr. all right? Do you want to go last? If I oh, could, oh. I might also indicate in the end that I might be begging your indulgence for an adjournment to take some instructions on some of the things being said this morning regarding Reverend Smith. Well, we'll, we'll see whether or not the um, morning adjournment can be taken to you. afford you that opportunity. I do have a couple of questions. Um, Woods, Ms thanks. Furlong, um, I'm uh, Mr Woods. I appear with Mr Bird for Northside Christian College um, <clears throat> and the church, as you're aware. Uh, I just wanted to ask you a couple of uh, questions arising from your evidence. Firstly, um, you're um, currently a teacher at the college, is that correct? That is correct. And um, after your initial period, which is the period you've been talking about now, you were away from the college between 1998 and 2008 when you returned, is that correct? That is correct. Um, you talked about being terrified to say anything for fear of reprisal um, back in the day when these allegations came to you from the students. Yes. Do you feel that way about the college of today if one of those allegations were made to you? No, I do not. And Ms McGlinchey asked you a question um, about independent assistance to you as a first year teacher and you responded that you didn't have any independent assistance or That's supervision. Um, is that the case for a new teacher beginning at the college today? Are you, are you aware firstly of, of what assistance is given to new teachers at the college today? We have a mental system set up at the college for new teachers, um, not just new teachers 
um, as in first year arts, but new teachers who might need help just getting established in the college. I also know that a new teacher has a lesser teaching load so that they have time to actually meet with their mentors and to get themselves established and sorted out. That new teachers have, are under provisional registration with the registers, with the Victorian Institute of Teaching, perhaps. But, and, and therefore, they have to fulfil requirements to show that they understand what they are doing before they're given complete registration. Yes, I understand. And, and lastly, just some questions about um, the way the college was controlled uh, at the time that you brought uh, these allegations forward. Um, you said that it was the senior pastor who controlled um, everything in the school at that time. Um, is it still the fact that the senior pastor controls what happens within the college? No, it is not. And is it correct that the school has a separate board, which wasn't the case uh, at the time? That is correct. And the school has its own policies and procedures quite separate to those of the church? It does. Um, and just in relation to mandatory reporting, um, is it the case that the college uh, provides professional development sessions to its teachers in relation to mandatory reporting? Yes, it is. And it has a new principal um, as of a few months ago, um, but I want to take you back to the immediate principal before that. Were those mandatory reporting sessions um, things that happened at that time as well, before the new principal yes, started? Yes, they did. And have they continued under the new principal? Yes, they have. Uh, and uh, do you feel that the college of today is a safe environment for children? I have my own son at the college, so I would not put him there if I felt it was an unsafe environment. Yes, thank you. No further questions. Thanks, Mr Woods. Mr Chowdhury, do you have any questions? No, I don't. Thank you. And Mr Horrigan? No question. No. All right. So, um, Mr Pratt, uh, perhaps what we'll do now is take the mid-morning adjournment and allow Mr Pratt the opportunity to um, take some instructions and um, resume after that. So, I'm not sure if you've followed what's happened this so long, but... Just let me explain to you. We normally take the mid-morning German about 11.30. Mr Pratt is indicating that he wants the opportunity to have a discussion with his client, Ms yes. Reverend Smith. Certainly. So we're going to take the mid-morning adjournment now and um, resume in about um, 30 minutes' time. All stand.
Silence, all stand. Good morning. My, my name is, is Pat, Mr. Pratt. I represent. Uh, sorry, I can't hear. Sorry, is that better? My name is is Mr. Pratt. I represent Reverend Smith yes, in these proceedings. Um, I've just got a few questions for you regarding your statement. Yes. Can I start with some of the things you said additionally this morning to your statement? Yes. You made mention that you uh, you put your trust in people. Godly men to do the right thing. Yes. Um, you went on to say that, however, these men did not do so. Yes. Which men in particular are you speaking of? I'm speaking of Neil Rooks and Pastor Smith. All right. It seems, however, from the evidence you've given us this morning, that at no time did you take any of these complaints or issues to Pastor Smith? I did not. You didn't? No, I didn't. So you only made your complaints to Mr Rooks? I did make my complaints to Mr Rooks, yes. And you're unaware of what Mr Rooks did with that information, is that correct? I am unaware of what Mr Rooks did with that information, yes. Right. But you told us before that there was... Um, bullying and harassment from Pastor Smith not to speak out? There was bullying and harassment from Pastor Smith on a multitude of things at the college. So not in, not in this, not relevant to this issue in particular then? Well, I think it is relevant to this issue. No, no, not on this issue in particular. Not on this issue, that is correct. Okay, so at no time did Pastor Smith ever tell you or bully you or harass you into not speaking out about the issues you took to Mr Rooks? On this issue, that is correct. Thank you. Right. On a weekly basis, shall we say, between... 87 and 89, how often would you see Pastor Smith at the school? We would have a weekly prayer meeting in Pastor Smith's office every Wednesday. And that's it? From memory, I can't remember any other times but that, yes. Is it fair to say then that uh, Mr Rooks was Pastor Smith's Delegate to run the school. I object to that. I'm not sure this witness is properly placed to uh, to answer that particular question, given her lack of knowledge of what um, what communications or structures were available or above her. She's given evidence that uh, she knew what the situation was between her and Mr. Rooks, um, and some general indications of Pastor Smith. But in terms of a form of delegation. Perhaps it could be put another way, mm, Mr. Pratt. I'll attempt to reword that. Um, Mr. Rooks was the principal. That is correct. Mr. Rooks was the person who ran the day to day operations of Northside Christian College. That's correct. Did you have an understanding of? where you could take a complaint relevant to Mr Rooks that you may ever have had? I did not. But you understood that Pastor Smith was a senior pastor, of course? Yes. And I'm correct that you, you remained 
in Northside Christian College for 11 and a half years. That is correct. And in all that time, Pastor Smith was the senior pastor, wasn't he? That is correct. Can I put it to you that um, it wasn't Pastor Smith, Pastor Smith's role to run staff meetings? Is that true or correct? Not, not true. Well, I object to that. I think uh, if that's a reference to college staff as opposed to church staff, uh, then it may have force, but I think it needs some clarification. Yes. Right? You suggested in your evidence that at a staff meeting, uh, and I'll presume you're talking about a teaching college staff meeting, uh, that Pastor Smith was discussing union representation. That is correct. Is it your belief, is it your evidence today that Pastor Smith ran that staff meeting? Pastor Smith ran that part of the staff meeting. I cannot say if he ran the whole staff meeting. And your, your evidence was that he indicated that if anybody joined a union, they would be dismissed. Is that right? That is correct. Can I suggest to you that you're mistaken about that recollection? I am not mistaken about the recollection. Was it, um, is it fair to say that the school, there was an expectation on staff in relation to their conduct, how you conducted yourself? Yes. Is it also fair to say that there was an expectation on staff as how you were attired? Yes. And was that uh, expectation explained to you by Mr Rooks? It was explained to me both by Mr Rooks and also by Pastor Smith on two separate occasions. On two separate occasions? Yes. Was it, and was the conversation with Pastor Smith at your initial interview or acceptance of the position? It was at my acceptance of the position, yes. So he was outlining to you the expectations of staff at Northside Christian College? He was, yes. So at the end of your time at the primary school, yes. So that's you commenced teaching the secondary school in 1990. Yes, that is correct. Uh, at that point, there, you've had no response from Neil Rooks regarding any of the allegations that you've taken to him. Is that right? That is correct. You said before you weren't too sure where to go. Is that right? Sorry, could you rephrase that? Oh, I object to that question. Too sure where to go. It could, be, it could be given some specificity. Perhaps the transcript isn't correct. Um, you said previously that at that point there you weren't sure where to go with your complaint. That is correct. Um, you didn't consider taking the issue to Pastor Smith? I was very frightened of Pastor Smith. Sorry. That... And that this is relevant to why I didn't even consider taking it to Pastor Smith. I did not see him as a person I could go to. I was fearful of his response to me. But did you not just tell me before that you had no response from him regarding this issue? I was fearful of Pastor Smith overall if I need to clarify that. And this was just another issue I didn't feel I could take to him. 
So you took it that way? I took it to Mr. Rooks, as I've said, and I sought to deal with the issues myself as best I could as a 23-year-old with no support and no encouragement and no help. You completed your teaching degree, though? Yes, I did. And was there nothing in your teaching, teacher training education regarding child no, protection? No, there was not. There was nothing. nothing given to us in my teacher training. So, just to clarify, nothing from you to Pastor Smith? About on, this, on this issue, no. I've got nothing further, thank you. <coughs> Mr Beckett. It's a couple of small matters arising. Um, I think you mentioned a moment ago um, about a conversation that um, Pastor Smith had with you at the time that you accepted the position in 1987. That's correct, yes. Um, who did you understand was appointing you to the position of a of Pastor a Smith was appointing me. All right, and you received a, a letter of appointment from him? Yes, that is correct. And... Um, uh, Neil Rooks, as I understand it, is deceased, is that, that right? That is correct, yes. Those are my questions. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Ms Furlong. You're um, excused. Thank you for your attendance. <clears throat> Call Kerry Lovell. Do you wish to take the oath or the affirmation? The oath. Could you raise the Bible in your right hand, please, and repeat after me? I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. In this royal commission. In this royal commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the and truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. Just replace the Bible and take a seat. Just right where you are. Lovell, I wonder if you could state your full name for the Royal Commission, please. Kerry Lorraine Lovell. And you provided uh, a copy of your address for the Royal Commission? Correct. And um, what is your current occupation? I'm a manager. And uh, where do you manage? At Uniting Care, Ageing. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you provided a statement dated the 7th of October 2014 for the Royal Correct. Commission? Correct. Are there any changes you wish to make to that statement? No. Do you say it's true and correct to the best of your knowledge? To the best of my knowledge, but I'm not good with dates. So they were the best I could remember. Thank you. Um, I tendered the statement. Eighteen point zero zero one nine. I wonder if, uh, if you wouldn't mind reading out your statement starting from uh, paragraph, um, paragraph four. Um, Northside Christian College, known as Northside, was founded by the Northside Christian Centre Church and was physically located on church property. Pastor Dennis Smith was the senior pastor of the church and had oversight role at the school. He did not teach at the school. The church also had a board, but I cannot recall who was on it, and I do not recall if I even knew at the time. Mr Neil Rooks was the headmaster of the school while I was there. At the time, my husband and I were pastors at Assembly of God Affiliated Church in Diamond Creek. Since I was attached to a different church, I did not know the relationships or politics of the church. 
and North Side Well. Please continue. In around 1987, my daughter started attending Northside and I started relief teaching at the school. In or around 1989, I had an interview with Mr Rooks for a part-time role providing special education. After further discussions with Mr Rooks, I also started to assist with welfare and counselling services to the students. I believe Mr Rooks consulted with Pastor Smith prior to my taking on these responsibilities. <coughs> this belief is based on my understanding of the school structure and the conversation I had with Mr Rooks. My role included providing support and extra tuition to children, either small groups or individuals who were falling behind in their studies. I could provide the support either in the classroom or by taking a child away for one-on-one -on -one lessons. I was often in and out of classrooms collecting students and I had a room where I could take the children for additional study. My first significant interaction with Ken Santalans occurred when my daughter was in his class and it was in my capacity as a parent. After I started working as a special needs teacher at Northside, I was in and out of Ken's classes collecting students. There was a short period when the room I used was behind him, so I saw him as I was coming and going. I remember Ken teaching from at least two rooms during my time at Northside. One of the rooms was in front of the room I was using, the other was the new, in a newer area. While I was at Northside, Ken taught the same class level, so he did not move rooms a lot. That's from my memory. In 1991, I first became aware of allegations of inappropriate behaviour against Ken. Mr Rooks asked me to speak to AGT and some other children. The allegations were about hugging. Four girls had been frontally embraced by Ken and AGT had observed it. <laughs> to the best of my recollection at this time, I was not provided with any information about previous allegations against Ken Santalans. My role was to talk to the children one-on-one -on -one and relay my findings back to Mr Rooks. The inter interviews were an opportunity for the children to share their concerns in a safe environment. It was a natural environment as I often had children coming and going from my office due to the nature of my role. I remember that during his interview, AGT shared the account of Ken hugging the girls. The other boys didn't verify the details of his account at that time. However, the boys all wanted to talk about the dynamics within the classroom. These dynamics seemed to be associated with Mr Santaland's disability. They felt that it was unfair and they were resentful that Ken was using the girls to tell him what was happening in the classroom. As a result of my conversations with the girls who were involved, I was convinced that hugging had been occurring in the classroom. As a result of my conversations with the students, I became concerned that there was an unhealthy dynamic in Ken's classroom, and this was causing resentment amongst the children. Ken was showing favouritism, and some of the other children were seeing this and were having a negative reaction. Soon after this, I spoke to some of the parents who expressed concerns about past incidents related to Ken. I asked Mr Rooks if I could look at any material relating to those past allegations. He gave me some documents, which are summarised in a document titled Chronological Summary of Allegations Concerning Behaviour of Ken Santalans. I was looking for a pattern because his behaviour behavior was causing alarm. After meeting with the students, I spoke to Mr Rooks and then prepared a summary in memorandum form. I was not involved in any decision making or administrative processes after I handed over the memorandum, but Mr Rooks said that he told Ken it would not happen again. It was not to happen again. It was my understanding that Mr Rooks discussed these matters with Pastor Smith. My recollection is that a month or two later, I met with Simon Murray, Neil Rooks and Ken Santalans. At the time, it was my understanding that Mr Rooks and Pastor Smith had decided to escalate the matter, but I was not present when this was decided. At the meeting, the allegations were put to Ken in the context of his teaching style. Although I was told Ken could see shapes and outlines, my observation of him was that he was totally blind, and this was impacting his teaching and the dynamics in the classroom. 
Ken's vision contributed to the bigger picture regarding decisions on managing these complaints. We decided that Ken could not be alone with the students. I could not monitor him as I was meeting with children, so we organised to roster mothers as monitors. We asked them to come in for shifts to help out in the class. I do not recall if they were given the specific reasons for this, for being there, although I did organise part of that roster. I do not know if there was a written policy at the school regarding appropriate or inappropriate touching, including hugging, but it was generally accepted and known that you didn't <coughs> hug the children at that time. In my discussions with Mr Rook, I knew that Ken hugging the children was being interpreted in a sexual way, and it was made clear to Ken by Mr Rooks, and it, and it was not considered appropriate behaviour. In 1993, approximately one year after Ken left the school, I had received a memorandum from Mr Rooks regarding a complaint from the school by AGR, the father of a student, AGC. In that memo, Mr Rooks asked me to contact AGR to discuss the matter and conduct any investigation that I deemed necessary. As a result of the memorandum, I spoke to AGR and AGC and prepared a memorandum for Mr Rooks, recommending the allegations be taken seriously. I also <laughs> added that I wanted to get more information from personnel in health and community services that I'd met at a recent mandatory reporting seminar. At the time, mandatory reporting was not in place. Um, additional information. I was not always the person that spoke to children when allegations came to light, as I only worked two days a week. I know that records regarding Ken were kept. I don't know if any one person was aware of all the allegations. There was a changeover of staff at the time. So I think different people may have known different things. Generally, I would have a discussion with Mr Rooks and then prepare a memorandum. I'm aware that Mr Rooks would discuss the content with Pastor Smith. They would consult and make decisions about what to do. I had the impression that my findings comprised part of the material they used to make their decisions. Um, resignation. Um, I think that eventually Ken was asked to step down due to his eyesight, but in the end he resigned. The students would have been informed of this, but I do not know what they were told. Shortly <coughs> after Ken's departure, I also left the school as my husband had been posted overseas. Um, my police statement. About 2000, the police approached me for a statement to clarify certain details from my memoranda. I think this is because the memos often assumed knowledge based on verbal discussions with Mr Rooks. A copy of my police statement is marked. To my knowledge, the memoranda and my subsequent police statement are the most contemporary account of events. To the best of my knowledge, they are accurate. I did not end up giving evidence in court because Ken pleaded guilty. Other observations. Since my involvement with the police, I have not heard any more about Ken. I had contact with Mr Rooks as he moved up to Sydney, but we never discussed Ken. Mr Rooks has since passed away. I think that today the matter would be handled differently as current legislation provides clear processes and procedures that were not in place back then. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> You say early on in your statement that um, you were frequently in and out of uh, Mr Sandland's class when you were first at, uh, yes, at correct. Northside, is that right? Yes, correct. Did you notice anything about him and the way he interacted with the children back then? Not of a sexual nature, no. But in terms of the way in which he, um, he related to the children? Is there anything unusual about that? No, not, not anything worth mentioning, because I would have mentioned it if I hadn't noticed it. What about uh, the way in which he physically interacted with the children? Is there anything that you Sorry? Noticed? The way in which he physically interacted, did he touch the children? Um, what did you do with the well, children? Well, I didn't see story? that, no. No, not when I was in and out, no. All right. Um, I want to take you to some documents. Some of them predate your... Uh, your, one of them predates your time at the school. Uh, if Tender Bundle, Northside Tender Bundle, tab five can come up, please.
I might just ask you a general question before I'll take you and give you an opportunity to read that statement. Sorry, if that can be zoomed in and then the witness can read it. Sorry, zoomed out so that it's small. Thank you. Need some assistance to read the, the handwriting. Yes, it's, I can read. Right, it. In, it reads as far as I can see. I'm sure other others may um, bring, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong. In our contact with him, and this is regarding Mr. Sandlands. It would seem important to avoid, by innuendo, seeming to impute any culpability on his part. At the moment, the situation is one of no case, or at least no case proven. And then in brackets. Had the contrary been so in the past, appropriate action would, of course, have been to... And then we don't know what it says. However, in the context of past ripples, it is very important to advise that whilst it would, I think, our desire and hope to defend him to the hilt, any appearances of imprudent relationships would provide something difficult to defend him to the extent we would like. Such would be an untenable situation for us as he would appreciate. So the loving but firm request is to, and then it trails off. Do you see that? Yes. Now, <laughs> obviously this is not your document. No. And it predates the time that you came to Northside Christian Centre. Right. Or Christian College, I should say. Yes. When you arrived, were you ever told of any allegations about Mr Sandlands that had arisen prior to you joining Northside Christian College? No. Um, later, you came to be involved in a number of investigations or a number of interviews of students, I should say. Um, and I presume as part of that, you spoke to Mr Rooks? Correct. Did he ever indicate to you that um, there had been allegations against Mr Sanderlands of um, certain conduct, <laughs> which, no, wa which um, was of concern. Sorry, I'll just finish so, answering sorry. the question. Um, prior to you joining Northside Christian College. No. Um, were you aware... And I'll just take you to uh, Tender Bundle 6, which is the next document. Were you aware on or about 20th of March 1987 that um, allegations had been made by um, two Year 5, 6 girls about Mr Sanderlands having some Grade 1 and 2 children on his knee? Just to clarify, I think it's three. Thank you. I'll ask the question again. Were you aware in 1987 of allegations that had arisen in March of 1987 from three grade five, six girls <clears throat> that Mr Sanderlands had one of his female students seated on his knee and was touching her on the lower stomach and on her legs? Not at the, not initially, no. Later on, when I did ask for some, if there had been allegations, um, I was given a summary, um, but not when I made that first... I mean, during the time that Mr Sandlins was there, there was one incident that I did investigate, and at that point, I did not know about this. All right, well, I'll come to that. So... Um... I'm, I'm correct in saying that in 1987, at least, you were not aware of these allegations. No. Uh, were you aware that um, um, he had been provided guidelines in 1987? No. Um, I'll show you a document, Tender Bundle 9, if that could come up, please. Uh, so the evidence we have is that these were given to Mr Sanderland's at the, at the request of Pastor Smith in April of 1987. 
were you aware in 1987 that such guidelines no. had been imposed on him? No. Um, now, your involvement with the school at that stage, you, you were a relief teacher, as I understand it. Correct. Um, and you later became um, part, a part-time teacher and part-time counsellor, is that right? Yes, correct. And um, how many days a week did that involve you being at the school for? Um, two days. All right. And what years did you uh, work two days a week for? Um, <laughs> it was... Um, around 1989 and it was for about five years I think four or five years before I went overseas All right. um, <clears throat> so in that in that period 1987 1988 and 1989 were you aware of these early allegations and the guidelines that have been provided to mr. Sanderland um, to right toward the end of my time there, but not initially. Yes, when you say right towards the end of your time. Well, after um, there was after he after the um, first situation about the girls being cuddled, yes. um, hugged. Um, I didn't know it then, but then later on, I was asked to speak to some of the parents, and that was when I asked for was there any other allegations. All right, so. If I just go to that period before you get the, what you've called the first allegation in 1991. Mm. So the time period prior to that, when you were working as a school counsellor, so in 1989, for example, mm. were you provided with any information for, by Mr Rooks or indeed by anything else, anyone else, about allegations against Mr Sanders? No, no. Were you provided with um, a copy of the guidelines prior to... No. Or in 1989? No. Um, now, you've, uh, you're aware of who Margaret Furlong is? Yes. And uh, did you know her in, uh, when, when she was at the school? Yes, in she 19... was a teacher. Yes. yes. Now, you've probably heard some evidence from her today. Yes. Um, and I'll just go through those briefly. Were you aware of allegations made by AGV that Mr Sanderlands had touched her in 1987? AG. AGV, yes. You're looking at the pseudonym list? Um, no. Um, uh, in 1988, um, she said that Emma Fretton had come to her with allegations that Mr Sanderlands had touched her. Mm. Were you aware of that at any stage? No. Um, were you aware of Mr Sanderland sending for Emma Fretton to Ms Furlong's class? No. Um, and then in 1989, so in 1989 you were, the, you were at least a part-time school counsellor. Yes. Were you aware of <clears throat> an allegation by AGW that she had been touched by... Mr. Sanderland at an earlier occasion. Um, Eighty-nine. No. No. You're clear who AGW is. Yes, I've, I've looked at here. Is that the name you recognise? No. Now you were asked to come then to the first allegations, which um, were made by. AGT's mother, is that right? That's correct, yes. And um, AGT's mother had come to the school, had she, and um, indicated that her son had seen a number of girls hugging Mr Sanderland, is correct. that right? Yes. And also an, an allegation that... Um, one or some of those girls had hugged him from behind and touched his genitals. Is that right? Yes. Um, I'm not sure it was that specific. Right. I'll have to go back and look at the... But yes, he, he felt it was of a sexual nature. There was a sexual element to it. Um, 
I wonder if uh, Tender Bumble 19 could come up. Uh, Ms Lovell, this is a, a chronological summary that Mr Rooks prepared yes. on the 13th of December 1993 concerning behaviour of Ken Sandland. Mm -hmm. And it's a document I think you refer to in your statement. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we don't have a number of the documents upon which this was... Um, this document was based, so um, I'll have to take you to the relevant entry in this chronology. If we could go to Ringtail 32. Which is the next page. Thank you. You'll see there's a... Uh, an entry dated the 22nd of August 1991. Oh, yes, yes, that's correct, yes. All right, and you'll see in the second paragraph there that KS had allegedly invited four girls, and the girls are named, to frontally embrace him from behind... Sorry, frontally embrace him and wiggle their bodies and embrace him from behind, touching his genital area. Do you see that? Yes, yep, yep. Now... I understand that um, you were involved in interviewing um, and both AGT and a number of the girls who yes. were said to have seen that. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And you set that out in, um, in your police statement, I think, mm -hmm. at some length. But um, I just wanted to ask you about those interviews. First of all, you say in your police interview... Sorry, I withdraw that. In your Royal Commission statement, you say at paragraph 13, I remember that during his interview, AGT shared his account of Ken hugging the girls. The other boys didn't verify the details of his account at that time. Do you see that? Sorry, it's in your, it's in your statement. But do you recall saying that in your yes, statement? Yes, yes, I do. Yes. Yes, right. I have it now. Now, if we go to your police statement, which is at Tender Bundle 30. So, 38, I meant. Ringtail 121 could come up. Scroll down further so that we can see 12. Right, so this is the police statement that you gave in, um, in March of 2000 concerning a number of the allegations that had arisen in, about Mr Sanderlands. That's correct, isn't it? Yes. And you'll see that um, at paragraph 12... <coughs> you, were you were asked to um, interview the, the children concerned. Is that right? That's correct. Um, and so the children you were interviewing were first AGT but also a number of other girls and boys who are said to have witnessed or been involved in the, in the incident. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. All right. Um, we'll see at the bottom of the page there, um, <coughs> you recount and just stop and we'll see there that your conversation with AGT is set out there. Yes, that's right, or part of it. All right, and that include, we'll see there, Mr Sandlands, this is you recounting what AGT said, Mr Sandlands favours the girls in the classroom and hugged them heaps of times. Mr Sandlands told them, I love you, and they had to, and they had to say, I love you back. Yes. Mr Sandlands approached the girls and told them to touch me here.
The other boys all wanted to talk about the dynamics within the classroom, and these dynamic, dynamics seem to be associated with Mr Sandland's disability. Yes, that's correct. And then at 15, you say, as a result of my conversation with the girls who were involved, I was convinced that hugging had been occurring in the classroom. Yes, that's correct. So you reached that conclusion. Definitely. What conclusion did you reach about the touching of genitals? Um, I think I said, I'm not sure I said there or in the police, that um, that wasn't verified by the girls or the other boys. But I mean, I documented that the original student had stated that but um, the others didn't verify that. Were you able to establish from AGT who, which girl he was talking to? No, he just talked about the girls generally. All right. So you didn't have a specific name of a, of a girl who was involved? I don't in remember. It? I don't recall if I did. I don't think I documented that. And uh, you were convinced that uh, Mr Sanderlands was asking his has, asking those female students to say, I love you and so forth? Yes. yes. Um, you refer in paragraph 16 that as a result of the conversation, you became concerned that it was an unhealthy dynamic yes. in his classroom. What did you mean by that? Um, I just felt there were things happening that were not right. What, um, what both things? Both in the... Um, relationships between him and the students um, and also the hugging girls and asking them, do you love me, was... It just wasn't right. That was unhealthy. Um, now, when you concluded the interviews with the children, um, who did you report to? Uh, Mr Rooks. All right. And was he the person who had asked you to undertake the interviews in the first place? Yes. And uh, what had he asked you to do specifically? He told me that there had been an allegation. Um, I was aware of what that allegation was. And he asked me to speak to the, the student in question and then also to speak to the other students. So, prior to going through that process, had you been informed of um, the previous allegations about uh, Mr Sanderland dating back to 1986 and 1987? No. Had you been given a copy of the, um, of the guidelines? No. Do I take it then you weren't looking for other breaches of the guidelines? No. Because you hadn't been shown them? That's correct. Um, and then you say at paragraph 17 of your statement, you spoke to some of the parents who expressed concerns about past incidents related to Ken. Do you see that? Yes. So were these additional <coughs> allegations to the ones that you were investigating? I don't recall. Um, I, there's no documentation, so I'm not actually... I'm not sure. But uh, in, this is your, your current statement, the one mm. completed just a few days yes, ago. Yes, and I was asked to speak to some of the parents. Yes, but you don't, do you recall what you were asked to speak no. to them? No, I, I don't recall the specifics. But there were... Were these new allegations that the parents had come up to speak to you about? or were you, No, you, no. Or were you asked to go and speak to parents about old allegations? I think I was asked... Oh, they definitely weren't new allegations. Nobody actually came and made an allegation to me personally. Um, so I think it was a general... Just from memory, it was a general discussion with some of the parents just to, to ask if what the concerns were. But I do not remember the specifics. And... Then you say, then you asked Mr Rooks for any material and is that when he gave you 
um, documents, including the, uh, the the guidelines that Mr. Sanderlands had been placed. Uh, on. No, I didn't receive guidelines, um, but I did I did receive a summary of allegations that had been made. I see. And is that the is that? Um, <laughs> sorry, I'll withdraw that. Um, And you say you were looking you were looking for a pattern because yes. his behaviour was causing alarm. Yes. And did you discover that there was a pattern? Yes. And then when you prepared your summary to Mr Rooks, what did you say about that pattern? Um, I said that personally I didn't feel Ken Santaland should have been teaching in a classroom. Um, but there, I was. I had no doubt that hugging was occurring. Girls were asked if they loved him. Um, children were had been. They had sat people, children on his knee, um, and it had gone over quite a period of time. And um, we don't have. Unfortunately, we don't have the memorandum that you completed. But that was included in the memorandum, was it? I'm not sure what I wrote, I can't recall. It's a, a long time ago, but I know I did have a conversation with Mr Rooks saying that Ken Sandland should not be in a classroom. All right. So that's, uh, that would effectively end his role yes. as a teacher at uh, Northside Christian College? Well, yes. And uh, then you provided your memorandum, I think, to, to Mr Rooks. Um, what's the next step? What happened next? Um, well, after I gave it to Mr. Rooks, um, he would be he would have discussed it with um, Pastor Dennis Smith. Um, I wasn't part of that process. Um, but he told you that he was going to raise it with. Oh, Pastor he was Smith. certainly going to follow through. Yes. All right. And then you say you had a meeting. Um, a meeting with Mr Murray, the the deputy principal, is that right? Correct. Mr Rooks and Mr Sanderland. Correct. What did he say? What was Mr Sanderland's response to the allegations that were put to him? Um, Mr Rooks conducted that meeting. Um, and he did talk about um, it was it was a number of things, including his teaching. Um, I, as far as I remember, Mr. Santlands denied allegations against him at that point. All right. Now you see in paragraph nineteen that um, Mr. Rooks and Pastor Smith had decided to escalate the matter. Mm -hmm. Who were they escalating it to? Um, escal when I said escalate, it was to to deal with it, um, to deal with Ken Sanderlands and being a teacher at the school. All right. Do I take it that, that it was then a matter between the principal and the senior pastor to deal with? Well, yes, yes. And um, what was your involvement at that stage? I wasn't involved in management of staff. That wasn't my role. All right. And um, what determination were you told about, if any, that was made by Mr Rooks and Pastor Smith um, about what to do with these allegations? Um, I was under the impression that they were, um, they were actually reviewing his position at the school. And is that when the issue about um, monitors in the classroom came up? Oh, well, I said that I, did, he, it was, I didn't feel he should be left unsupervised in a classroom. Presumably, presumably by that stage you'd been told that he was staying at the school. Well, it was still in process. Um, they hadn't made a decision. Were you ever given um, a response to your recommendation that he be taken out of teaching? Um, I was under. The, I can't remember details, but I was under the impression that it was being processed. 
and what was the outcome of the process? Well, in the end, um, he was he was asked to leave, but I think he resigned. But that's the end of 1992. Right. And um, the period that you're talking about is in September of 1991. Right. Do you accept that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So you'd said, you'd indicated in, in about September of 1991 that you didn't think he should continue teaching. Mm. Um, the matter was referred to Mr Rooks. Is that right? Correct. Sorry, I just need a, yes, an answer I, for, I the, always for the transcript. Yes, I referred it to Mr Rooks. Yes. Um, and you knew that Mr Rooks had uh, raised the matter with Pastor Smith. Yes. And that they were dealing with it at that yes. stage. Yes, yes. Um, and do I take it then that... You didn't hear further in terms of your recommendation that he cease teaching at uh, Northside Christian College? No, not that I recall. Um, <laughs> but you do recall arrangements being made um, for a monitor to be placed in his classroom? Correct. And uh, who told you to do that? Um, I'm not sure I did. I, I know I was part of that. I'm not sure whether... I, I organised some of the mothers, I think, um, because they had a staff member, um, but I think there were, if there were gaps, I organised some of the mothers to come in. <coughs> so that would have been under orders from Mr Rooks. Now, there was an issue with, um, and I think you indicated this earlier, there was an issue with his, his sight, that is, he, he was visually impaired, wasn't he? Yes. What... What was told to the roster mothers about why, um, by you, as to why Mr Sanderlands required um, a monitor in his classroom? I'm not, I don't recall exactly, but probably it was in relation to his eyesight. Was anything said um, about the allegations that have been made against him by AGT? Not by me. Are you aware of anybody speaking to those monitors about that? I don't know. I'm not that I'm aware of. They may have, but I'm not aware of it. Did you, did you hear the indication from Ms Furlong earlier that she said uh, a teacher's aide was placed yes, in his um, room? Yes, Margaret Bovey, yes. And that was at some stage after September of 1999? That was, yes, yeah, she was involved in that, yes. All right. I, did you organise for that to occur? I don't think I organised the staff. I didn't. I, I didn't organise staff, um, but I think I did organise a few of the parents to fill in gaps. All right. And um, was there any particular? Sorry, I withdraw that. And um, so, either to Ms. Bofi or to those parents, was any indication given to them that allegations of touching of children <laughs> and inappropriate hugging of children? was of concern to the school? I don't know. Not by me. Um, you'd agree, wouldn't you, that it, it was certainly a moment of some importance for the school at that mm. stage? Yes. And that it had risen all the way to uh, Pastor Smith to deal with? Yes. Um, and you thought it was important? Yes. So important that you'd recommended that he cease teaching at the school? Yes. Can you assist us with why Ms. Bofi and the teacher and the sorry the parents who were monitoring the situation were not advised about those allegations? I don't know whether they were advised or not. I, I didn't advise them, but whether they were or not, I don't know. Did Mr. Rooks or <laughs> Pastor Smith ever say to you um, <coughs> words to the effect of anybody monitoring? Um, Mr. Sanderlands should know about the allegations of inappropriate Not that touching. I recall. Did you receive any instructions from either Mr. Rooks or Pastor Smith about dealing with Mr. Sanderlands and particularly the uh, monitoring of his behaviour within the classroom? No. We probably heard some earlier evidence today from Ms Furlong about um, the way she um, 
felt about the dynamics within the school, about the way in which Pastor Smith operated um, the college? I heard some of it, yes. Um, now, you understood that, um, first of all, there was a principal at the college, obviously, <coughs> a Mr. Mr. Rooks. Correct. And he was assisted, I think, from 1991 by uh, Mr. Murray. Correct. Is that right? Um, but that sitting over both of them was the senior pastor of the church, namely Pastor Smith. Is that yes. right? Yes, yes. And were you aware that um, he was the chair of the church board? Yes, probably. And were you aware that he was also the chair of the, uh, the college council? I have to say I didn't really know the, all the details of the structure. All right. Did you have any um, personal interaction with Pastor Dennis Smith? Not very much at all. But you had some? Yes, a little. Did you have some to do with um, these allegations about, about Mr Sanderland? No, that was with Mr Rooks. And um, did you have any conversations with Pastor Smith about Mr Sanderland at all? Not that I recall. I, I related to the headmaster. All right. So you de dealt with these allegations in 1991 by interviewing the students <coughs> and so Correct, on. yes. Do you recall any indication <coughs> from Mr Rooks about what um, senior pastor um, Dennis Smith's attitude to the allegations was? No. Um, were you aware in, we'll go to the next year, in June of 1992, if we come up to that stage, um, I just wanted to ask you about whether you were aware of allegations by, just get the pseudonym correct, um, AGS. Uh, no. Um, were you ever told of allegations made that um, in 1992? Mr. Sanderlands had shown pictures of men and women <coughs> naked from a magazine? No. Uh, did that subsequently come to your attention at all? No, I only, only heard about that last week. Uh, were you aware of any allegations against Mr. Sanderlands that were dealt with by Pastor Smith in 1992? No, not in relation to sex education, which apparently occurred at that time. Um, so, no, I was not involved in that. And there was a memorandum that was attributed to me about that, um, but that was not my memorandum. All right. So I was not involved in any of that. And I do not know who was. And um, there seemed to be... Perhaps two events. First of all, the showing of the of the magazine, <coughs> of presumably of some pornographic image. Um, you're not aware of that. No, oh, I was last week, but not yes. not at the time. No. And then there seems to be a separate allegation that um, Mr. Sanderlands had been involved in um, teaching children about sex education. I have absolutely no recollection of that either. Right, and um, now. I understand just about the discipline policy at uh, Northside Christian College when you were there. Yes. Um, this is back in the... Uh, so back in 1991, <coughs> 92 and 1993, um, some form of corporal punishment was acceptable yes. within the college. Is that right? That's correct. And what was the main method for uh, disciplining children at that time? Um, various. Um, but the use of the paddle did occur, but not... Very frequently, to my knowledge. Um, when you say a paddle, what what do you mean? See, I don't know. I was not a classroom teacher, so I don't know the details. 
right. around Did you that. Ever see one of these paddles? No, I was never present. Do you understand what the policy was about disciplining children with the paddle? Um, well, in relation <clears> to this, um, male with male student, male a female with female. Um, but I, I didn't see any written policy. I was not aware of it. I was not a classroom teacher, so I would probably have no reason for that to be passed on to me. All right. So you, uh, I think you said earlier that uh, your, one of your children started in 1987, but you started um, working two days a week in 1989. Correct. Were you aware of the discipline policy at that stage? I knew that the paddle could be used, yes. Yes. And what about <coughs> um, that it was only a male teacher to be used with a male child and similarly only a um, female teacher for a female child? That's my understanding of it. Yes. Was it your understanding in 1989? It would have been, yes. Yes. Was it, to your knowledge, was it generally well known what the policy was within the school? <coughs> I don't know what other people knew. All right. Well, do you recall it being announced or talked about at staff meetings? Because I was two days a week and I started as a relieving teacher and then I was two days a week, I was not always present at staff meetings. I did attend some, but not, not regularly, so many things could have been spoken about that I would not be aware of at that point. All right, now, um, in 1992, I mean, there's... I'm just taking you through some of the issues from 1992. Do you recall any allegations coming to you or becoming aware of any allegations of sexual abuse or inappropriate conduct by um, Mr Sanderlands in 1992? Um, no, I do not. Um, did you later discover that he was to leave the school? Yes. Did you know that there was um, a process of evaluation between um, about June of 1992 and December of 1992? Uh, of evaluation by Mr Rooks and others? I was aware that there was an evaluation, that they were processing it, yes. All right. And what was the, what was the main concern, to your knowledge, about that? It was not really discussed in detail with me. Um, I was not a person in leadership or authority. So the details were not discussed with me. It was general conversation with Mr Rooks. What was your understanding as to why Mr, uh, Mr. Sanderlands then left the school? I felt there were a whole range of reasons, <clears throat> inappropriate behaviour as well as um, his um, eyesight, the lack of eyes. He had a disability. How did you form that opinion? Um, I think it was from conversations. With, with whom? Mr Rooks. With Mr Rooks. But I don't recall details. Right. Do you re remember going to an assembly, the one that uh, Ms Furlong gave evidence of? Yeah. No, today? I was not present at that assembly. Do you recall um, whether um, there was any representation made by Pastor Smith or anybody else at the college or the church about why Mr uh, Sanderlands had left? I have no knowledge of that or recall. Now, you were involved in 1993 in some further allegations, is that right? That's correct. And um, the allegations were from AG, <laughs> AGC. Yes. And um, they were quite detailed allegations, yes, they as were. I understand. they were. Um, and if Tender Bundle Tab 17 could come up. Now... Do I take it that um, you were asked by somebody to undertake some more interviews? Is that right? Um, could you repeat that question? Sorry. Of course. Um, just before we turn to the terms of the uh, of the memorandum of the 29th of November 1993, um, who asked you to? conduct this process of interviewing people about the allegations made by AGC and his father, AGR? Mr Rooks. What did he say to you? He asked me to speak to both involved um, 
and any others that were relevant, any other students that were relevant. And um, <clears throat> clearly you did so because it's set out in the memorandum there. Yes. Um, and so the allegations had come from the father and um, he had described a number of symptoms including bedwetting, hate for school, um, decline in academic... <coughs> outbursts of anger and so forth. <laughs> Do you see that? Yes, yes. And did you take those to be um, indicative of some form of abuse at that stage? Yes. And had you had any training to be able to pick that kind of those kind of matters as indicative of sexual abuse? No, I had I had attended um, the protective behaviours. I had attended some one day sessions, but that was all. <coughs> And um, if we go scroll down there, we'll see that um, you say, I will list the allegations in point form. Correct. And then you've set out a number of the allegations of effectively genital touching by Mr Sanderlands of AGC, is that right? Yes. And do you form an opinion <laughs> as to when this had happened? Um, <coughs> no, I don't recall dates. I don't seem to have it there. No, I don't recall. Um, but there's genital touching of um, both him <laughs> and um, another grade two boy. Is that right? Yes. And if we go over the page, there's a further child there at the top who is um, said to have had, his, had Mr Sanderland's hands placed down the front of his pants. That's correct. That? And then I think a, a further child, I think I'm up to four now, where Mr Sanderland had put his hand inside the underpants of a child at the school. <coughs> Do you see that? Yes. Yes. Uh, so you repeated those allegations in, in the memorandum, set them out there at, at some length. Yes. And then on the third page, you said that the, um, the allegations should be taken seriously due to the number of past allegations of a sexual nature. <coughs> you see that? Yes. And that you thought, in your experience as a as a counsellor, that the children are unlikely to lie about these matters. Yes. Then you then you suggest some further action about speaking to health and community services about how to proceed. Yes. All right. So um, here you were faced in 1993 with allegations of perhaps more severe sexual behaviour by Mr Sanderlands towards children. Yes. How did you... Um, what was your reaction to those allegations, given your earlier recommendation that he not be employed at the school? Well, he was no longer at the school at this point. He'd already gone. <laughs> um, I, was, I was quite distressed by it. Yes. Yeah. Casting your mind back to um, the recommendation you'd made in 1991 that he, uh, that he not be employed at the school... Did you have a, a particular reaction to these new allegations? On Look, that I'm not really good on dates, but I'm pretty sure this happened before that. Um, it was, I think it was when the boy was in his class, so I think it might have occurred before that. But I can't remember because I haven't actually documented that. Well, I think we've, the evidence available to the Royal Commission appears to be that AGC would, says he was... a abused in 1989, right. which would put it before the first <laughs> allegations, which yes. were in 1991. Right. right. So what happens with... Um, well, sorry, before I turn to that, you say you wanted to speak to health and community services. Correct. Um, and you'd been at a recent mandatory reporting seminar. Yes. <clears throat> so this is, the, this is the, the introduction of mandatory reporting in Victoria, isn't it? It hadn't... It hadn't come in at this point. Yeah, so but it was preliminary it was training being, was being yeah, preliminary rolled out. training had occurred, yes. yes. All right. And what did you say to Health and Community Services? 
I knew you were going to ask that, and I, I have to say I do not recall, and I have not documented it. Um, so there must have been a conversation, and then a conversation with Mr Rooks, um, but sadly it was such a long time ago, I, I don't recall the details. Um, all right. So you prevent you provided this memorandum to uh, Mr. Rooks. It's clear from the memorandum. Yes. What happened as a result of that? Um, it was to then be discussed with Pastor Smith. Um, I'm not sure whether a board was involved, but certainly Pastor Smith. Um, so I handed this all this information over for them to then follow it up and. To deal with it. Right. Did you suggest to them that um, it was perhaps appropriate to take these matters to the police to deal with? I don't recall whether I said that or not. Um, do you recall Mr Rooks discussing that matter with you? No, I do not. Do you recall Pastor Smith indicating that the matter should be referred to the police? Um, I, I never ever discussed these directly with Mr Smith, uh, Pastor Smith. It was always with Mr Rooks. Now, you say you handed it to them to follow up and to deal with. Correct. Um, did they come back to you and say what had happened as a result of these allegations? Not that I recall. So these, no. seri these are, you'd agree that these are serious allegations of abuse yes, against yes, children? Yes. Was there not some further conversation where you were told that this is what... Um, Pastor Smith or the board had determined... I knew they were dealing with it and I knew that they were... It was being processed and, and they were dealing with it, but I do not recall any direct conversation. And um, you... Um, you continued to, to uh, work at the school, didn't you, for...? For a few months after... I, did, I left... It wasn't very long after that. Um, I did leave within six to 12 months. All right. I went overseas. But there was no... Was there any further communication with you as to what had happened at, um, at, uh, at uh, Dennis Smith's level or the church board? No, not that I recall. Were you aware that um, Mrs Sandland had been interviewed? Um, by Pastor Smith and Mr Rooks about the allegations? I, I was later, yes. When, when you say later, when...? Um, when I saw documentation, when I gave a police statement some years later. In 2000? Yes. In the year yes, 2000? Yes, All right. And um, were you told that um, Mr Sanderlands had denied the allegations? I don't recall being given any detail about it. All right. And you, were you told by Pastor Smith that he'd taken the matter to the board? Um, I knew that he was going to deal with it, but I didn't know what the process was. Were you aware that he'd said to the board that there was nothing more that could be done? No. Now, uh, in your police statement, um, you refer to AGC's father going to and speaking to a minister of the Anglican Church, where Mr Sandlands was teaching Sunday school in yes, 1993. Yes, that's correct. Yes. Was that because AGC's father had spoken to you? I'm just trying to remember who told me. Yes, it was the father who told me. And um, you also say in your statement that he was suspended immediately by the Anglican minister? Correct. And... Um, you're not aware of any s similar action being taken with Mr Sanderlands? <laughs> no, not that I recall. All right. Now, the evidence appears to be that um, Mr Mr Sanderlands took some form of medical leave for about five years. Uh, yes, I heard that. I, I wasn't aware right. that he'd taken leave. Were yes. you aware that his, uh, his employment only came to a conclusion in 1998? No, I wasn't. Were you back really... at the school by then? No, I didn't go back to the school. And there's a reference at... Just to complete your police statement. 
tab 37, paragraph 40. Sorry, I'll get through all that. I'm almost finished. Um, I've just lost my place. It's the document I have a wrong indication. I wonder if um, if that would be a suitable time. For the lunch adjournment. So, Ms Lovell, we're about to take the lunch adjournment now between 1 and 2. Thank you. All staff.
Silence, all stand. Your Honour, I have in fact uh, finished my questions for Ms Lovell. Thank you. Ms McGlinchey. Yes, thank you, Your Honour. Uh, Mrs Lovell, my name is Ms McGlinchey and I appear for Emma Fretton in this matter. Right. Um, prior to you commencing your part-time relief teaching role at the college, had you completed teacher training uh, um, college? Yes, yes. All right. And you'd had experience as a teacher? Yes. All right. Okay. And how many years experience? I'm um, about four or five years. All right. Okay. Um, and was it a diploma level? Yes, or a, a three-year diploma of primary teaching. Now, um, in 1989, you, uh, your evidence is, is that you took up a role providing special education. Correct. Was that also a teaching role? Or? Yes. All right. And did you, as part of your training or at any other time, um, receive uh, training in that special education role? No, I was a general teacher. All right. Um, now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, the role of a special education teacher is to provide one-on-one -on -one assistance to students who are not reaching their educational milestones. Is that correct. your understanding? Yes. And which areas did you provide that assistance to children? Um, in the primary section, right. um, in usually in the core subjects such as maths and and English, reading, reading, yes. spelling, comprehension, yes. those sorts of yes. things. All right. And do you recall that you provided that assistance to Emma Fretton? I don't recall. All right. You don't recall Emma being your no, oh, I don't. I had quite student. a number of children and sometimes it was just short term. I might just have them for a session or a couple of sessions. So there were quite a number of children that would come and go and I'm, I don't recall if she was one of those. Thank you. Now, was there, um, in your role as a special education teacher, I know you don't remember Emma in particular, but, um, uh, but just in general, was there any uh, process by which... Um, uh, Children, it was explored why children may not be reaching their educational milestones. It may have been in the staff meetings. Um, in my case, it would be quite specific. It might be that the child had missed a particular, say, a mathematical instruction and they just needed a little bit of help with it. So it was quite specific. Mm. And did you work in conjunction with the other teachers, the yes. class teacher, yes. uh, to provide extra assistance to yes, those they, children? Yes, they gave me instructions as to what the child needed. All right, OK. Um, and just in relation to your role as a counsellor, did you have special training in that No, role? I was there as a pastor. I was a local pastor. All right. So your role was essentially a spiritual one? It was, um, yes, and, and well, you know, the student welfare. Do you recall um, uh, speaking to Emma in that role, Emma Fretton, at all? No, I don't recall that. All right. Okay. No. All right. Do you recall whether there was ever any uh, concern in any meeting raised about uh, Emma reaching her milestones or her general development? I'm afraid I don't recall right. her specifically in that in relation to her her work. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'd ask to go to the master. That's convenient. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Mr. Pratt. I represent Reverend Smith. Uh, you said before that uh, you wanted, when you, did, when you did one of your reports, that you wished to go and take some advice from the HNCS group that you'd met through the mandatory reporting uh, process. Yes. yes, that's correct. Was that uh, were you were you permitted to do so? Yes. There was never any issue raised by uh, the school about you doing that. No. Pastor Smith never discouraged you from doing so. No. I'm correct that your uh, reporting of this. Uh, 
of these allegations from your investigations was to Mr Rooks and only to Mr Rooks, is that right? Yes, it was to Mr Rooks. And you had no interactions with Pastor Smith regarding your reports or the recommendations you provided? No, I didn't deal directly with Pastor Smith. Pastor Smith, uh, are you aware that Pastor Smith was provided information by Mr Rooks? Yes. During your time at uh, uh, Northside Christian College, uh, you had only limited interactions with Pastor Smith, is that right? Correct. Were those interactions uh, pleasant, professional? Yes. yes. You wouldn't describe them as uh, bullying or harassing? No, not to me. Uh, I have nothing further. Thank you. Towards Mr. Chairman. No, thank you, Your Honour. No, thank you, Your Honour. Mr. Horrigan. I have nothing on Mr. Coonigan. No. I might have nothing for Mr. Coonigan. No, I don't. No. Thank you. Just, um, just a couple of matters, if I could uh, take you back, um, Ms. Lovell, to the evidence that you gave with respect to being approached by Mr. Rooks to conduct the um, investigation with respect to the, the frontal hugging. So you know the period that I'm talking about, the 1991 period. Um, did you get any explanation as to why you were being approached to conduct that or those um, investigations? No, not specifically. Had you ever been asked to do something like that before at the school? Not prior to that occasion, no. And um, Mr Beckett asked you what, what it was that you were asked to do and you said that you were asked to speak to the people involved. But did you get any other instruction beyond that? Um, yes, to to hear what the children had to say yeah. and then to give that feedback back to Mr Rooks. And, and that was the limit of your involvement? <coughs> yes. So you weren't asked to investigate and give an opinion about um, the veracity or of, of the allegations or level? Well, of I suppose an opinion would have been part of it, but... I don't recall specifically. I was just asked to feedback what um, what the children had to say. Had you ever received any training with respect to <coughs> interviewing of children with respect to the making of allegations of sexual abuse? No. Did you give that indication to Mr Rooks? Mr point? Rooks knew I was a pastor, so I had counselling. I had studied counselling um, at Bible College, um, so I was assuming he was looking to me as someone who had some basic counselling skills, so being able to ask questions and listen and report back, so, um, yes. And uh, you, um, Mr Beckett asked you some questions about what information you had about allegations concerning Mr Sanderlands prior to you being asked to conduct this investigation and you indicated to us that you had no knowledge at all of any um, allegations of uh, um, child sexual abuse or behaving of Mr Sanderlands behaving inappropriately towards <coughs> Other than that particular Other than situation. The allegations yes. that you'd been given to him. Yes, just that one, but I didn't have previous ones, not at that point. Yeah. So, um, of course, you now know about um, the history of complaints that had already um, come to the attention 
certainly of Mr Rooks that gave you the task. Um, what, um, what difference, if any, would it have made to the way in which you went about your task had you known of those previous complaints? Um, I think that I faithfully recorded what the children said and I don't think that would have been any different. But if there were some guidelines that had been given to Ken, then I, I would have actually addressed those um, if I had have known. So I may have sort of looked at some of those. But um, as far as relating what the children said, I feel I did that sort of honestly and faithfully. So, so what's your... Um, or is there any comment that you want to make to us about the way in which you were asked to conduct that investigation in the circumstances of not having that information? Um, I think that... I think I didn't know the context of the allegation. I didn't have a context. Um, but Mr Rooks and Dennis Smith did have that context. Um, so they would have been able to assess what I said in, in the context, whereas I was unable to. And moving now just to one final point that touches upon your task of, and this is, these are my words, of mm. rostering the volunteering mothers into mm. the classroom mm. with Mr Sanderlands. We've understood your evidence to be that you uh, you did not um, give those um, volunteer parents any information about concerns about Mr Sanderland's um, inappropriate behaviour with the children mm. or potential risk to children of his sexually inappropriate behaviour with them, mm. and that you're not aware that anyone else gave that information to those parents? They may have, but I am not aware of it. Yeah. Yes. Do you recall speaking to any of those parents during the time? <laughs> of no, I don't. Um, I think the, the staff member was the main person who was supervising, and I think the parents, from memory, the parents were just filling any gaps. Um, so it was predominantly a staff member. To my memory, this is my memory. Do you think that those uh, volunteer parents in that role, in that um, volunteer, volunteering supervisory role in the classroom, should have been given information about the potential risk of Mr Sanderlands to the children? Um, I think with a, an adult present, um, I would not have expected anything inappropriate to happen. So I probably was of the belief that um, if, they, if he was being supervised, nothing inappropriate would have happened. And if something did, the parents would, would recognise it straight away. Anything <coughs> arising out of that for anyone? No, nothing arising. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms Lovell. Thank you for your attendance. You are otherwise excused. Thank you. Simon Murray. So Mr Murray, do you wish to take the oath or the affirmation? Oh, the affirmation. Affirmation? Could you repeat after me, please? I do solemnly. I do solemnly. Sincerely and truly. Sincerely and truly. Declare and affirm. Declare and affirm. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. In this royal commission. In this royal commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Just take a seat right where you are, please.
Sorry, I wonder if you could state your full name for the Royal Commission. My full name is Simon Henry Murray. And you've provided your address to the Royal Commission? I did. And uh, your current occupation? I'm a councillor in private practice. And uh, you've provided a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 7th of October 2014? I did. And if, um, are there any changes you wish to make to that statement? Uh, there would be a couple of minor changes, and I think from memory, uh, item 16 and the last item. Um, I'll have a copy brought up on screen. <coughs> Go to paragraph 16. What do you wish to change in paragraph um, 16? Just that the whole paragraph um, should be <coughs> related to the second couple of meetings in 92, the following year. So that part of your statement relates to 1991 and this, the change yes. relates to... It appears to be not related to 1991 there, but that relates to 92. <coughs> and then... Um, was it paragraph 26 of your statement, which is on the fourth page? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the reason I wanted to change that was number 26. At the time, I believe, the college acted responsibly. Uh, but now... Uh, having access to information that I was not aware of then, I believe <laughs> this man, his employment should have been terminated immediately and that the information that was there should have been forwarded to the police. Thank you. Uh, I tender the statement. Exhibit 18.0021. Mr Murray, um, just shortly before you start giving evidence, I, I spoke with your, um, your uh, legal representative and he indicated that you had um, an additional paragraph or so that you wanted to add to your statement. Is that right? I do, but I would prefer uh, that not to be part of the statement, but to be something I just say at the conclusion of my evidence. All right. Are you happy to say it now, so that we have it? If you require it, I'm happy to say it now, but because it, 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 it does contain a little bit of emotional stuff and it's directed to a, a, a small group of people, well, not a small group, but a probably a larger group of people, I prefer to leave it to the end. Yes. Um, I, I think it might assist everyone concerned if you if you did it now. I, I, OK. Um, I could get upset here. That's right. We can, uh, we can have a break or you can have a pause. Over the past two or three weeks, I've been deeply impacted as I've learned for the first time why some of the children at a school I taught had suffered. And I want to say to you all, including some that I wasn't aware of to yesterday when I came in here on this sheet, that I've been overwhelmed as I've read and heard what you went through. I admire your courage and your resilience and feel that something of your hurt and pain I'm extremely upset that I didn't know at the time 
and I feel deeply for you as to what has happened. And I hope that this process plays a part in continuing to build your lives. That's all I'm going to say. Murray, would you like some water before we ask this? <laughs> Mr. Murray, um, you joined uh, Northside Christian College in 1991, is that right? I did. Um, before that, you'd, uh, you'd taught um, at a number of schools? One, primarily. I was at the school before I was at Northside, I taught at for 18 years. And um, <coughs> what was the position you, uh, you occupied at that school at, I, at the end? Uh, I occupied a position, a junior secondary uh, master teacher. Uh, and I was responsible for the care and welfare of uh, my students who were in year seven and eight. And uh, you came into you came into uh, Northside Christian College in 1991 um, to teach in grade six. Is that right? Yes, I came uh, to teach in grade six. And uh, your primary role was with. Uh, primary students rather than secondary students. That's right, and that's one of the reasons uh, I was interested in applying for the job, that <clears throat> it was something different to what I'd been doing. It just gave me a new challenge. And um, you occupied the position of deputy principal from 1991? Nominally, I did. Um, when I responded to the advertisement in the um, newspaper down there, um, it had... Uh, deputy principal slash teacher. And uh, when I responded to that, uh, I was at an interview uh, where the principal was present and I think a couple of board members. And I, I was told uh, um, that uh, the pr if I was to undertake the role of deputy principal, uh, then I had to become part of that church. And that's something I was not prepared to do. And so I made that very clear. Um, but uh, they still went ahead uh, and appointed me. And uh, I was appointed to a full-time grade six teacher. Uh, and uh, I was given a title, deputy principal. And was your appointment uh, made by uh, Pastor Dennis Smith? Um, he would have played a, a big part in that, um, and I can't remember uh, whether he was uh, one of the board members at that uh, interview or not. Um, the principal was, um, and there were two board members. Um, after you commenced with uh, Northside Christian College, did you sit on the, um, the college council? Never. I never even attended a meeting for the college council. All right. Uh, but you were aware that Pastor Smith chaired the, the College Council? Yes. As well as the church board? Yes. And, <clears throat> and uh, what did you understand his role to be uh, as far as the college was concerned? Um, on matters of... Uh, I'll answer it this way. I understood uh, the principal to be in charge of the day-to-day -day running of the college. But when it came uh, to policies and major decisions, uh, he was the one that would have been consulted. So budgetary decisions, for example? Um, uh, just in thinking back, um, yes, uh, budgetary decisions, and uh, there may have been a financial person there that he consulted with. All right. And uh, decisions about the appointment of staff were made by him, ultimately? Um, 
him in consultation with the principal. And uh, similarly, what about decisions to uh, to discipline a member? Um, the any any dis uh, discipline a member of staff? Yes. Uh, if it was of a serious nature, um, he would be involved. All right. Um, when you say involved, whose decision was it to your to your understanding? Ultimately, his decision. All right. Now, when was the first time that you came to know of allegations against uh, Mr. Sanderlands? I first became aware uh, that there were um, concerns about him. Uh, would have been about August, September in my first year there, 1991. Prior to that, I had no reason to be concerned. And um, what was the nature of the allegations that you heard first about uh, Mr Sanderland? Could you repeat the question, please? What was the nature of the allegations that um, you heard? Mr. Sanderlands. The the nature of the allegations uh, and the one that can uh, that was of some concern uh, was the fact that when he was uh, correcting children's work, he would have them sitting on his knee, um, and that uh, uh, children were in close proximity to him uh, when he was relating to them. All right. And what was the context in which you received that information? I was uh, at very little notice. I, w I was asked to attend a meeting, and uh, I think I was briefed about those concerns before the meeting with Mr Sandilands. Yes. And um, who asked you to attend? I think uh, the principal. Uh, although I couldn't be sure about that, but I, I, I'm, I think it was the principal. All right. Now, um, and the purpose of the meeting was to consider the allegations, was it? It was... I th what, what's happened with me, I, I've sort of got the meetings fused together, uh, the, the 92 ones and 91 ones, but um, with the allegations, uh, with the purpose of the meetings, um, it was to discuss his uh, close <laughs> proximity to, to girls, um, having them on his knee, um, and evidently uh, there were some guidelines uh, or some regulations in place that uh, restricted his contact with, with, with children. That was the impression I got, and that, that he had breached those guidelines. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go through it. When, when you went to that meeting, first of all, is that a meeting that occurred between um, Mr Smith, Mr Rooks and Mrs Lovell? Uh, Mr Smith, uh, Mr. Rook, Mrs. Rook, Mr Rooks, and I, I think Mrs Lovell was there. I, I can't visualise that, um, and there could have been one other person there. All right, and um, had you... We think that um, those first meetings occurred in August or September of 1991. Does that sound right to you? That sounds right to me. OK. But prior to that time, had you received any allegations or information about Mr Sanderlands in the nature of touching of children or inappropriate behaviour towards children? I, I think around about that time, uh, a boy student uh, said something to me about uh, uh, the classroom situation being very unfair, uh, that uh, Mr Sandlins favoured the girls. And uh, he was quite concerned about that. And uh, he uh, um, then... Uh, said that uh, I think I might have asked him how he, how, how Sandilands favoured 
the girls. He says, oh, I, you know, he puts them on, on his knee uh, when, they're, um, when, when he's reading stories to them or correcting their work. I see. And... And um, at the at the meeting, um, I'll just go through some points of view. First of all, were you aware that um, Mr. Sandilands had received a warning from the previous principal in 1986? Not at that time. No. Were you told at some later stage? Um, I wasn't aware of that until um, I read these documents that uh, the investigator emailed to me. All right. Um, now, you referred a moment ago to some guidelines that have been imposed on Mr Sandlands, is that right? Uh, that's what I was told, yes. Who told you that? Uh, Mr Rooks, the uh, principal. And were you aware that the guidelines had been imposed in April of 1987? No. I thought they were recent. All right, I'll have them put on the screen for you. Tender bundle, tab nine. <coughs> Were you shown these guidelines at about that time? I wasn't shown these guidelines. Well, just take your time to read through those. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, I can't recall. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll read through them all. Just read them, just read them to yourself now, if you don't mind. seven of them there. Thank you. Um, so, uh, you've seen this document before? I've never seen this document. All right. Even so, recently. Um, at the time, were you shown any uh, any copy of these guidelines? No. Were I you told just... about what the guidelines were? I was told generally what the guidelines were, yes. Yes. What were you told? Uh, I was told that uh, he, he should not be... Uh, having children on his knee and uh, having them in close proximity. Basically, that's what I remember. All right. Now, was at the meeting that you had with um, Mr Rooks and Mr Smith, um, was that a point at which the allegations and the response to the allegations was determined or did it await... Um, a further interview with Mr Sandlands. I really can't recall um, much about that at all. All right. Now, the, the issue seems to have been about him having children on his knee that you recall. Is that right? Oh, that, that was the issue, yes. Well, that was one of the issues, that, in fact, it's the only one I can recall. Do you recall other allegations about um, children hugging Mr Sandlands? Yes, I recall those too. Uh, I do. Was, was that considered at the same time as the yes. placing the children it, it, on the knee? It, it was in together, those All two. All right. Yes. And were you aware of, of an allegation by AGT, and I'll take you to the pseudonym list in a moment, but were you aware of an allegation by AGT that uh, Mr Sanderlands had had a girl embrace him from behind and put her hands on his genitals? Specifically. Specifically, I wasn't aware of that allegation. Um, All right. I, I was more generally aware uh, that uh, he was in close proximity, um, uh, that, that, that girls would hug him and that uh, sit on his knee. That was about the extent of, of what I knew at the time. All right. Um, 
And if you just have a look at the uh, pseudonym list in front of you, you'll see the Northside students set out there at the bottom of the page. If you just go to AGT. Yes. Um, does that uh, name ring a bell to you? It does, yes. And were they allegations that were being dealt with at this first meeting? No, not that I remember. Um, oh, yes. Um, in, in fact, this uh, AGT uh, was, uh, was the one who uh, spoke to me about favouritism and uh, girls sitting on, on the knee. And, and so that was covered in that meeting. All right, now... <laughs> We have um, a, a summary of the meeting that occurred on or about the 22nd of August 1991, and I'll just take the, this to you, take you to this um, uh, tender bundle 19, if we could go to the uh, third page of that document. Yes, the ringtail 0033. All right, we'll just stop there. Uh, you'll see at the top a meeting of DVS, NR, KWI, SM discussed the whole matter and agreed that although he had probably not broken the legality of the guidelines, he had in fact broken the spirit of them. Do you see that? I do. Um, so just taking you through those initials, DVS is a reference to Pastor Dennis Smith. Great. Uh, NR is a reference to Neil Rooks. Great. KWI is a reference to Keith Ingram. Great. And SM is a reference to you. Great. All right. Do you recall this determination of the meeting? I vaguely do, yes. All right. How, how do these meetings operate? Who Did somebody chair them out of that group? Oh, yes. Yes, uh, Dennis Smith. And um, how did he conduct himself during those meetings? He seemed to be uh, uh, determined to get to the bottom of what was going on. That was the impression I got. Right. Um, and uh, did he defer to Neil Rooks or was it effectively it was his meeting to make a decision? Oh, very rarely. Well, I didn't get a sense that he was deferring to Neil, no. Um, was Dennis Smith a kind of uh, a large, a large figure, if you like, a, uh, a dominating figure within those groups, or authoritarian? How would you describe him? Uh, the words that you've used, I would use. Um, and so there was some description there about not broken the legality of the guidelines, but in fact broken the spirit of them. Do you see that? Mm. Um, so you said earlier that um, one of the allegations being considered was the placing of children on knees. Is that right? Exactly. And I've shown you the guidelines yes. now. And you note that in the guidelines there's specific prohibition on children Def sitting on his definitely. knees. Definitely. <laughs> Are you able to assist us with how that phrase came about, namely he had not broken the legality of the guidelines? Well... First of all, um, I disagree with that. Uh, my feeling was that he had definitely broken the legality of the guidelines. Um, I was never given opportunity to, to read this report, and if I had, I would have very clearly uh, made that change. He had broken the legality of those guidelines. All right. And as, as you, if he had broken the legality of the guidelines, as you say, what do you think the appropriate action should have been um, of that group that was meeting? Well, quite frankly, I think he should have been... His employment should have been terminated. At that point? At that point. All right. I want you to... Um, to be, I want to be clear about this... Um, Please, Mr. Murray. I want to. I want you to put your your mind back into the position that it was in 1991, mm -hmm. and to ignore clearly sure. the additional material you've read as a result of that. 
So placing yourself back in 1991, if you had been faced with this allegation of uh, children being on Mr Sanderland's knee and knowing the guidelines to be as you do now, what was the appropriate course of action, do you think, in your mind, to take? Knowing the, what I know now, um, uh, back to, if I go back to 91, uh, the appropriate course of action um, uh, would have been, um, because he'd broken the legality of, of, of the guidelines, uh, to uh, draw his employment to a close. Um, were you, when the meeting was discussing um, these new allegations, was there consideration given to the warning in 1986? I don't recall consideration being given to that. No. Yeah. You're, you're saying there was discussion about the guidelines and it's clear, clear that the guidelines have been discussed in this meeting from these notes. Mm -hmm. Um, was it also discussed that in October of 1987 there were allegations that he had breached guidelines at that stage? I don't recall that at all. No. Do you think were you told about that time about him breaching the guidelines in 1987? No. Um, were you informed at about this time of? I'm sorry, I'll withdraw that. Uh, you heard the evidence earlier this morning from Ms Furlong? No, I've deliberately chosen not to listen to anyone's evidence. All right. Um, this morning, Ms Furlong gave evidence of a number of allegations which she passed on to Mr Rourke's in 1987, 1988 and 1989. Um, the allegations with respect to 1987 were about AGV, V for Victor, if you have a look at your uh, pseudonym. <coughs> Is that a name that you're aware of? Do you recall hearing any, um, any allegations against Mr Sanderlands concerning that child? No. Um, uh, Ms Furlong says she also spoke to Mr Rooks and provided him with an allegation that Mr Sanderlands had touched Emma Fretton in 1988. By 1991, had you been told of that allegation? Which number is this? Yeah, she's not on the list there. She's not, she has um, chosen to use her own name. Um, her, her old name, that is her, um, her maiden name is Hayes, Emma Hayes. Yes, I recall that girl. Yes. yes. Do you recall allegations being made um, by Ms Furlong that Mr Sanderlands had uh, touched inappropriately Emma Fretton? Um, I, I wasn't teaching at that time. Um, and uh, when I was at the school, uh, nothing was said about anything concerning uh, that particular person. And the last person I wanted to ask you about was AGW. Do you see that now? I do. <coughs> were you aware of that there were similarly allegations made by her that she had been touched inappropriately by Mr Sanderlands in 1989? No. Right. With respect to those three children, AGV, Ms Fretton, or then Hayes, and AGW, did Mr Rooks ever tell you of allegations made against Mr Sanderlands with respect to them? No. Was there any discussion of that at the meeting in uh, 1991 that we've just been going through? No. Um, if we go a bit further down the, the page, it, was, uh, it says here that um, Mr Sanderlands had an interview with Mr. Smith, with Pastor Smith in which he was admonished and rebuked for breaking the guidelines and for allowing the circumstances of the allegations to arise. Do you see that? Yes. Were you aware of that occurring? Uh, 
vaguely because I think yeah, it was followed by a meeting uh, with um, uh, a few other members of staff. It says it was emphasised at that further meeting on the 3rd of September that there was an agreement that there was no doubt that KS's intentions and motives were pure and in no way sexually oriented. Do you see that? Yes. Was that your opinion? Um, I couldn't make a judgment um, at that stage. Whose judgment then do you think that represents? I'm not too sure who, who would make that judgment. Uh, Is it reasonable to assume that because Pastor Smith was chairing the meeting that um, it was him who had proposed that agreement? Um, uh, with possibly input from others, yes. Now, effectively, I think at this stage, Mr Sanderland's then returned to uh, his class to teach. Um, yes. Um, and save for the admonishment by Pastor Smith, there was no disciplining of him? Not that I'm aware of. Do I take it that that decision to admonish him and to um, return him to teaching, was that um, one taken by the meeting or was it one taken by Pastor Smith or both? I don't think uh, a decision was made at the meeting to do that. You're saying a decision was made? No, I don't think it was made. To, uh, well, I, I'm not, not aware whether the decision was made. In fact, I don't think the decision was made at that meeting. All right. So there was a decision made outside of the meeting? Well, I'd assume so. By Pastor Smith or by Mr Rooks or who made the decision? Um, I'm not too sure. I can't answer that. Was there any discussion at that stage of contacting the police? No. Did you ever hear any discussion in all your time at, um, um, at Northside Secondary College about Mr Sandlands being referred to the police? No. Was it something that came up in the discussions between uh, you, Pastor Smith and Mr Rooks? No, not that I remember. No. Did Pastor Smith ever say to you that he'd received advice from the police um, about how to handle these matters? No. The next point, I think, is in um, April of 1992. We just scroll down that particular memorandum. Uh, there's reference there to um, a child being mentally scarred from an incident concerning the teaching of sex education when in Mr Sanderland's class three years earlier. Yes. Do you see that? Oh. Do you recall that incident, that allegation coming up? I do, yes. And um, what was the response of the school to that particular allegation? It was taken very seriously and uh, he um, was uh, basically told, from my uh, recall, um, not to engage in that sort of thing. Yes. We see at the bottom of the page there that there was a, there was a uh, 
two meetings with Mr Sanderlands at which uh, you appear to have been in attendance, is that right? Yes. Um, it says here there were two meetings and uh, I assume that to be true, but for me it's in my mind, as I remember, one meeting, uh, it's sort of all fused into one, those two meetings. All right, but you don't quibble that this is a, a reasonably accurate... Um... Oh, there were meetings then, yes. Um, if we just go over the page then, the significant points raised there are said to be Mr Sanderland's admitting that his answers to questions with respect to sex education in the past may have been too detailed. Mm -hmm. And that secondly, well, there's an issue about his eyesight deteriorating. And then thirdly, that Mr Sanderlands had breached the guidelines for administering corporal discipline to female students. Yes. You see that? No, I what, do. What was the rule about administering corporal discipline to female students? I, I, I'd like to say at the start uh, that um, I've never been in favour of corporal discipline at all. Uh, at any school that I've taught at, and I've never administered it. And uh, uh, when, so I feel very strongly about this, and uh, very clearly, uh, I remember that uh, he, uh, well, that the, the, the regulations were that no male staff member was to corporally punish a female student. And that was clear to you? Very clear to me. And was it clear to you when you arrived at the school in 1991? I have to say, no. Um, but it, it, it sort of, I felt that I, well, I didn't need to know that for myself because I, I knew when, when they, they said there was corporal punishment there and I, uh, I thought, no, I'm not going to engage in that sort of stuff. So at that, at that stage you're saying within the Victorian education system, um, at least in religious schools such as Northside Christian Centre, it was generally understood that um, if there was to be corporal punishment that it would be a female teacher disciplining a female child. Exactly. And a male child. A male teacher disciplining a male child. Exactly. All right. Um, now, you'll see there that there's reference to breaching the guidelines by administering corporal punishment. Do you see that in that first paragraph on the page? Yes, I do. And was there any determination made then, that is in June of 1992, about uh, Mr Sanderland's employment in the light of um, a further breach of the guidelines? Yes, um, I, I think uh, the principal uh, 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 may have suggested a, a termination of the employment at that time. Um, and that was, um, do you recall when he suggested that termination? It was at... Uh, one of those two meetings that are there. Um, I'll just You'll see there that um, there's a, a submission on the 5th of December 1992. Neil Rooks submitted a recommendation to Mr Smith that the continuation of the teaching contract be reviewed in the light of, and a number of matters are mentioned there, including breaches of the established guidelines. Do you see that? I do. What about the six months in, bet in between? That is, the breach had been identified in June of 1992, but it's not until December 1992 that we have a recommendation for his for the cessation of his contract. After those two meetings that uh, I attended, um, I w wasn't privy to any decision-making or any... Um, uh, conversation about them. All right. What was, um, to your knowledge, what was um, Pastor Smith's involvement in 1992 with um, Mr Sanderlands and uh, the consideration of his contract? I don't know. Now, 
Mr Sandlands left the college in December of 1992. Do you remember that? I, I, I thought it was a little bit before that, but uh, I do remember. How, how much before that? Oh, uh, maybe November, late November. All right. Um, do you recall why he left? Uh, my, uh, what, what was conveyed to me uh, uh, was some um, deteriorating health issues. Who communicated that to you? At uh, the principal. Did you speak with Pastor Smith about that? No. Um, was there any indication that um, concerns about his behaviour and the nature of sexual abuse or inappropriate behaviour towards children was a cause of his departure? That wasn't raised with me. All right. Were you aware of the, the um, recommendation that uh, um, 5th of December 1992 in that document, Tender Mundle 19? Please just read through that paragraph. And, uh, informed of that. No. Um, Mr Murray, it appears to be the case that the circumstances surrounding his departure, um, there seem to be a, a number of interpretations of it that are possible. Mm -hmm. One possible interpretation is that Mr Rook's position was that there were a number of breaches of the guidelines, um, behaviour concerns, complaints mm -hmm. from parents mm -hmm. about his conduct towards children. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was the reason why Mr Rooks was recommending the removal of um, Mr Sanderlands. Do you understand that? I do. Yes. And was that your understanding of why Mr Rooks may have wished him to leave the school? No, not really. I, I thought it was just deteriorating health issues. Right. The other apparent way in which um, the evidence might be interpreted is that he had a deteriorating visual condition, mm. eyesight, poor eyesight, mm. and that he was placed on <coughs> some form of disability support mm. but from the school because he was unable to teach. Is that right? That, that would be correct. Yes. That, was, that was your memory of what yeah. happened? That's, uh, yeah, and that was the health issues. So. All right. And was that view... Um, derived from speaking with Mr Rooks, first of all? In me speaking from Mr Rooks? Yes. Is that, did you gain that knowledge after speaking with Mr Rooks? Yes. Yes. And did uh, Pastor Smith say anything along those lines about the departure of Mr Sandler? No, I didn't really communicate with him about that. There was a, an assembly, according to Ms Furlong, that um, occurred at the end of um, 1992, at which his... Um, resignation or retirement perhaps was announced to the school community. Do you recall that assembly at all? <coughs> I don't, no. Uh, those are my questions, thank you. Thank you, Mr Beckett. No, thank you, Mr Gregan. Mr Pratt. Thank you. Mr Murray, my name is Pratt. I represent Mr. Well, Reverend Smith, in these proceedings. Yes. I just have a few questions for you. Sure. Um, you uh, earlier described, accepted Mr. Beckett's uh, adjectives to describe Reverend Smith as authoritarian um, and uh, essentially someone who dominated, was a dominating presence. Yes. Was he an authoritarian in the sense that he was the leader of the uh, school and church community? Um, Mr Rooks was clearly the leader of the school community. Yes. Um, uh, Reverend Smith was clearly the leader of the church community uh, and the school came under the church. But for day-to-day -day running, uh, the principal was clearly the authority. So the day-to-day -day running of the school was the domain of Mr Rooks. It wasn't 
the uh, remit of Pastor Smith to interfere with that day-to-day -day running? Unless uh, there was something uh, of a serious nature. Yes. And you said that you previously worked for 18 years at a, another school. I did. Did that school have a school board set up as well? They did. And would the chairman of the board be involved in matters of, seri of a serious nature? Um, I can only surmise and say yes. So you were used to that type of arrangement then? Um, or familiar with it, shall I say? I can only surmise and say yes. So I, I, I was not really aware of any major uh, disciplinary uh, events at the previous school. You're aware of Pastor Smith's background uh, generally in that he's not an educationalist himself? knew he wasn't a qualified teacher, okay. uh, but uh, as far as any other uh, training he's had, I wasn't too sure. In particular, that he wasn't a, a person who was qualified in education? No. Uh, would you accept that he then uh, was reliant upon the information uh, and expertise of Mr Rooks, who was an experienced educator in matters of education and school operation? Uh, yes, the educational side of it. Yes. Uh, but uh, in matters of uh, what we've been uh, talking about, um, he, he, uh, it wasn't an educational thing as such. It was uh, very, uh, very clear that this was uh, something uh, somebody in authority had to handle. And that person was Mr Rooks, wasn't it? Um, no, because uh, uh, my impression uh, was that uh, there was a higher authority uh, uh, over the school, and that was the church, and that uh, the leader of that high authority was uh, uh, Reverend Smith. Who reported to the school board? Well, I assume he did. Uh, I never attended any of those meetings. All right. Uh, the, you talk about Pastor Smith being the chairperson of a number of the meetings that you were involved in from 1991, relevant to Mr Sandler. Is that right? Um, yes. Yes. The meetings in mid-1992... Yes. He wasn't a part of those meetings, was he? This is, um, I couldn't give a definitive answer there. Um, uh, my recollection was that he was, uh, but it's a vague recollection. So the, the reference in Mr Rooks's chronology of it just being yourself, himself, Ms Lovell and Mr Sandlands isn't correct in your recollection? Could you name those four people again? Yourself? Yes. Mr Rooks himself? Yes. Uh, Ms Lovell? I've got vague recollections of her, yes. And discussions between the three of you and Mr Sanderlands? Um, there were certainly those discussions and uh, I can't remember whether um, Pastor Smith was there or not. Do you recall, and I accept that you weren't privy to this conversation, but do you recall ever having a conversation with Mr Rooks about requests for information uh, re Mr Sandlands? Requests? From Pastor Smith, I apologise. No. No? Uh, anything about his teaching effectiveness? Um just in that meeting where um, a number of concerns were raised, uh, emphasis um, on competition and things of that nature. The, how, how would you have described Pastor Smith 
during the time that you were there at uh, uh, Northside? I, I would say my relationship with him was distant. Um, uh, uh, that uh, he would uh, uh, be there but not there sort of thing. Um, I don't think he came over to the school a lot. But his presence was certainly felt. When he was there? When he wasn't there. He wasn't there as well. Hmm. He gave a police statement in 2000. I did, yes. The last paragraph of your police statement... Sorry, which it's uh, tab thirty nine. The last sentence of that paragraph. that statement referring to? It's a statement you gave to the police. So what was the last um, item on that? Do I have to see that up again? I think it was the wrong one. I can't recall that statement at all. I think that was the wrong statement that was, that was put up there, Mr Murray. The one on the screen now is yours, I believe, Mr Murray. Oh. Yes. That last statement... Uh, uh, was how I felt about the school and uh, uh, I thought uh, uh, the principal uh, was uh, very warm and, uh, and uh, uh, relational and uh, had uh, uh, created a, a good environment for the student. <coughs> that, that, that was my impression with of, respect the, of the principal. Well, with respect, that doesn't say the principal. With respect. The statement doesn't say that you're only talking of the principal there. You're speaking of the college. I'm speaking of the college, yes. And he was um, the one that I related to at the college and the one that was uh, concerned with the day-to-day -day running of, of the college. Yes. And it was, you say, you perceived it to be a school with a strong commitment to student and family welfare. Do I say that? Last line. Oh, yes. Yes, that's true. So that was your belief in 2000? Um, in reflecting back on my time there, that was my belief. Microphone here, but I hope I can be heard enough. Or, yes. but I need to refer to the screen. There's just one issue I I have, and that is that on page nine five six eight at the bottom and going over to the following page, a question has been put by Mr. Beckett. But you don't quibble that this is a reasonably accurate. We don't know what it's going to be accurate. And then there's an answer, and it says, oh, there were meetings, yes. I, I don't know whether... Mr Beck, I'm sorry. Did... Yes, I'm happy to clarify that. Thank you. I think that's a reference to Tender Bundle 19, if that could come up. If 
we could just go to um, page 33. <laughs> scroll to the last paragraph on that page. So I wonder if you could uh, just read through that last paragraph. I took you to it earlier today. Yeah, I've read that paragraph. And then over the page, we'll see the first two paragraphs of that page, page 34 of Ringtail. Yes, I do. Um, and now that, you've, now that you've read those excerpts, which relate to, the, to meetings on the 19th and 26th of June 1992, mm -hmm. do you accept that as an accurate record of what's uh, said out there? Uh, from my understanding now, yes. Uh, uh, I... From my recollection, yeah, that would be a fairly accurate record of what was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just, a, just a couple of things arising. I apologise, yes. you're on. No, no, go ahead. Um, first of all, you were asked by Mr Pratt about the involvement of Mr Smith in the meetings in 1992. Yes. Um, I just want to take you back slightly to the, the page before this in Tender Bundle 19. Um, I think there's, a, in fact, a more accurate record. I apologise. If you go to Tender Bundle 39, this is your statement to the police. Of 16th of March 2000, and particularly if you go to the second page. Yes, that's the one. And you'll see there, in the second paragraph, it refers to, on the 30th of April 1992, I was performing principal duties because Neil was interstate or overseas. Do you see that? I do. On this day, I received a memo from Dennis Smith in relation to Ken Sanderlands. Do you see that? I do. There were concern, uh, sorry, the memo concerned complaints made by five parents at the school mm. and that uh, Pastor Smith wanted you to contact one of those parents. Yes. And then those allegations were dealt with in June 1992 as a result of you being charged with Kerry Lovell to conduct a number of interviews with Mr Sanderlands. Is that right? Who was... Could you just repeat that? Yes. Well, it appears from that second paragraph there that you and Kerry Lovell were sent a memo by Neil Rooks. Do you understand that? Yes, I, yeah. Um, and you were to report back to him. Neil had provided you with a draft of a document relating to the deficiencies in... Mr Sanderland's teaching. Do you understand that? I do. Yes. And that there were then two meetings which were in the previous document we were looking at. Yes. Which occurred on the 19th and 26th of June. Yes. All right. Do I take it that that passage from the 30th of April through to the 26th of June was effectively the, the same process? Yes, I consider that the same process. And that process was commenced by Pastor Smith? Uh, yes. Uh, well, according to this, um, I, I, I can't really remember a memo, um, uh, but uh, uh, it was uh, 
it says here it was initiated by him and, uh, uh, and Neil was out of, uh, yes. out, out of town. Right. right. The last thing I wanted to ask you about was the, the monitoring, the placement of um, a teacher's aide in Mr Sanderland's class. Do you remember that? I do. Yes. Uh, now, did that, did that occur in 1991 or 1992? Do you remember? I think it was 92, but it could have been 91. All right. And... Um, uh, do you recall it being a teacher's aide or parents or a combination of the two? Combination. All right. And was it full time? <laughs> in other words, for every, whenever he was in the, it, in it the classroom? Yes. And what was the purpose of the monitoring? Um, because he'd breached um, the guidelines of having students on his knee when reading to them. Uh, that was my understanding of uh, having him monitored that, that, that this would not occur. All right. Yes. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Mr Murray. Thank you for your attendance and you're otherwise excused. Oh, thank you. I call Dennis Smith. You know, if I'd like, he's in a tucked away room. Smith, do you wish to take the oath or the affirmation? I will take the oath, Your Honour. Would you raise the Bible in your right hand, please, and repeat after me? I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence that I shall give. In this royal commission. In this royal commission. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but and the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you. If you just replace the Bible there and take a seat, please. Reverend Smith, I wonder if you could state your full name for the Royal Commission, please. Dennis Vernon Smith. And you've given your um, address to the Royal Commission, is that right? Yes. And what is your current occupation? I am still the Minister of Religion, but retired. And you've provided a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 30th of September 2014, is that correct? Yes. Um, and do you have any changes you wish to make to that statement? I do, yes, because the first information bundle I received has since been updated with information I didn't have before. I see. What do you wish to change? Um, paragraph 19. If I'm relating this to the bundle, it should be document 5, not document 1. 
2020. Again, document five, not document one. Um, sir, uh, I think I can assist with that. The uh, Royal Commission staff have certainly provided um, tabbed copies with the relevant references to those Fine. documents, right. interpreting what you were provided with. Well, then the only real change will be, again, because of information that got to me, is in item 29. And what is the change you wish to make? It, it should now read the committees, plural, referred to in document 12, and in the writ at document 47, were committees of which I was never a member. Thank you. Now, sir, I understand, uh, I see that you have a, a folder of documents in front of you. I have brought them in, yes. Yes, thank you. Um, what we'll do, if, if you don't mind, is if you could close that folder, and if there is a particular document you need to need to see, you, including your statement, that we'll have it brought up for everybody thank you. on the screen. I tendered the statement. Twenty-one. Yes, twenty-one. Eighteen point zero zero two one. So I, I see that you use the um, the, the pre-nominals, Reverend Doctor. Uh, can you please indicate um, what's the basis upon which you you hold both those titles? I hold a doctorate, a PhD, in theology from American University. And reverend is a reference to a position within the um, Assemblies of God or the... Reverend or pastor. All right. And do you prefer reverend or pastor? It's just your choice. All right. Now, I understand that... Um, the, uh, the church was founded, that is, um, what is now Encompass Church, but Northside Christian Centre during your time, as I understand it, as senior pastor, um, was established in about 1959, is that right? The original church was called the Reservoir <laughs> Assembly of God Church, and before I came to the church, it was later called Northside Christian Centre. And um, you came to the church in 1981, is that right? Correct. And were you, the, were you the senior pastor at that stage? I was called by the congregation through the board to assume the role of the senior minister of the church. All right. And you held that position from 1981 through to 1998, I think you said. And I handed that over, yes. Um, now, do I take it that you were instrumental in the establishment of Northside Christian College, or had that already under that, that already commenced by the time you took over? That commenced in 1978. It was running like, in its third year by the time I arrived. All right. So, um, and did it expand during your time? Yes. Um, was it originally a primary or a secondary school? And it was a composite. Accelerated Christian Education School based on an American curriculum. And um, is that the Accelerated Christian Education program you refer to? Yes. And you widened that for, to be a more traditional <laughs> curriculum, is that right? It became apparent to me in the first year of being there that the curriculum was insufficient in itself to stand. And having had some contact with the education authorities of Victoria, this proved to be true. And so I began steps uh, with the community to change it from a what I call a narrow uh, parameters of education to a more broader school-based curriculum concept. All right. And uh, you introduced that and oversaw its implementation in the school? I was fundamental in bringing the school into an association with Christian Community Schools Australia, which gave to it that basis of operation, yes. 
All right. And uh, during during your time there, did the number of children, the number of students at the college, um, expand or contract? Uh, it increased. <laughs> um, substantially, or uh... I'd say from what it was, yes. Particularly, again, when Mr. Rooks came along, he was the perhaps the greatest change agent that the school saw, and he brought about a great sense of growth within the school community. And that was in 1987? Um, Mr. Rooks, yes, when he was appointed principal. All right, what are you referring to when you're looking down? I'm sorry, just got, I've got a timeline of notes because my memory is not that good as far as remembering the dates. I'm just All simply right. well, here to zoom. I might... Uh, um, I wonder if you could show a copy of that to, to Mr. Camperia. I'd be very happy to do that, yes. Just a simple time. All right, I'll tender that so we all have it. With apologies for the handwriting. 18.0022. And so that um, we can have that displayed, so you, if you need to look at that particular Thank item, you. but I'll have it copied. But um, it would assist if we can just do it from, from your memory. I'll try hard. Because what is not clear, of course, is then mm -hmm. I have to ask you what was the basis upon which you came to Thank provide you. that timeline. So it creates some complexity. All right. So. By 1985, I think you received a direction from the Assemblies of God Victoria that um, local churches needed to incorporate, is that correct? That is correct. And so in 1985, uh, Northside Christian Centre became incorporated. Yes. Now, the college was not incorporated at that stage? The college was incorporated under the uh, rules that were given to us. Uh, by the solicitor, Dawes, Very and Stewart, I believe, they, they formulated the documentation to allow the college to become incorporated as part of the church. <laughs> All right, but it was not separately incorporated until 2002. I had left by that time, so I cannot answer that question. All right. But in essence, the, the structure that applied, and you've heard some evidence, no doubt, earlier today, was that effect effectively that the... The church was incorporated and had its own church board, is that yes. correct? Of which you were the chair? Yes. And then one of the ministries of the church was the uh, Northside Christian College? Correct. Um, that was not separately incorporated? Correct. It was part of or came underneath the church board? Which is what it had been before I arrived, basically, but now we are bringing it up to the new incorporation documentation. Yes. And, um, but in any event, by 1985, the college itself had its own council, called sometimes called the College Council? The College Council was um, referred to in the incorporation documents as a separate entity. Um, and um, you were the chair of the College Council? Yes. Or my yeah. appointee if I was absent. And the church board, where did it conduct its meetings generally? The church board tried to have at least monthly meetings, I would say averaging 10 a year. Where did it have those meetings? Uh, in offices, in the church offices, in my office. And the college council, where did that meet? I think it changed sometimes. Originally, before the college expanded, was probably in the church building, but later on across to the, the college side as well. All right. And um, that's where you, you uh, presided at those meetings at, uh, at the school or at the college? When so, I was present, yes. Yes, all right. Um, now, I take it from paragraph 12 of your statement, which will come up in a moment. say that the Board of Directors of the Church, Northside Christian Centre, delegated the responsibility of the management of the college to the College Council. Do you see that? Yes. Um, and uh, that wasn't a, a formal arrangement, was it, in the sense that there wasn't an instrument of delegation? 
was there? The instrument dele of delegation was the incorporation document. All right. And then, um, so is it correct to say that a, the day-to-day -day management of the college was operated by the College Council? The principal and the College Council, yes. And <coughs> that other, that still important matters that you sit out there had to be taken to the Board of Directors of the Church for ratification, is that right? Because that was fulfilling the mandate of the incorporation document. All right, so capital expenditure, budgets, staff appointments, policies and discipline were all matters that were um, the decisions to be made by the Board of Directors of the Church? No, they were decisions to be ratified and recommended by the Council. All right, and if they were not uh, ratified by um, the Board of Directors, sorry, I'll withdraw that, um, but of course the Board of Directors could refuse to ratify any one of those um, decisions. I am only aware of one time when the board overruled the, the council, and that was on a matter of a, uh, negotiating a loan for the college buildings. Nonetheless, the, uh, the way, nonetheless, the way in which the rules operated, that that uh, power was available to the board of directors at the church level. Yes. I understand that uh, you were involved in the um, in the recruitment of Mr. Sanderlands. Is that right? I became involved, yes. And I'll show you a document, Tinder Bundle Two. And this is a letter that you wrote to Mr. Sanderlands, dated the 29th of April, 1983. Yes, that was a letter confirming that he's fulfilled his three months probation and he's now a permanent member of staff. All right. And um, had you been involved pr prior to that in, um, so approximately three months before, in, in vetting him, in uh, uh, interviewing him for the position? If you said the word vetting, I did not hear you correctly. I was not involved in vetting him. What was your involvement then prior to this letter in, the April, in April 83? Well, my involvement would be that a recommendation would come to me that he was a, an available teacher and I would have, been, would have been informed that he had met the criteria of the Victorian Education Department, which was fundamental to his appointment, and uh, proceeded. That was uh, with respect to qualifications, was it? Qualifications and endorsement as a teacher. Endorsement by whom? Victorian Education Department. And um, did you um, call for reference referees? I would have imagined I would have, yes. Yes. Do you recall speaking to um, anybody at uh, St Paul's Anglican Primary School in Frankston? No. No, no, you don't recall, or no, you didn't speak to them? No, I didn't speak to them. Um, did you know that um, he had been at St Paul's Anglican Primary School? About a week ago when I read the documents. Um, it, was it not normal process to call up a previous employer and to check the references of uh, a teacher that was being introduced to the school? That would have been handled by the principal at that time. I thought you said you were involved in the, the reference checking procedure. <laughs> Because the documents of incorporation empowered the church to make the uh, employment agreements, the college did not have that right at that stage. Yes, and uh, you said earlier that, um, in answer to my question, that you would have imagined you would have called for references. Um, did you not take them yourself? Correct. Um, did you ask for any reference checks to be made available to you by those at the college who are employing Mr uh, Sanderlands? My only request would have been uh, that he had the uh, 
approval and the endorsement of the Victoria, Victorian Education Department because they were the ones who had the final authority whether a teacher could teach at a school. Surely you would have been concerned if there were, if there were any matters of discipline that had arisen at his previous school. Everything I received was positive and upon that basis I agreed to the appointment of him. Were you aware of any allegations of inappropriate treatment of children from St Paul's Anglican Primary School? I had heard nothing concerning that school at all. When was the first time you heard about those allegations? One week ago. I read it in the uh, bundle. <coughs> bundle. All right. Now, you refer to paragraph 17 of your statement, if, that'll, if that can come up, please. Okay. You'll see there the third paragraph, numbered 17, that teachers received a responsibility description and their code of conduct was clearly spelled out in contractual arrangements and staff handbooks. Do you see that? Yes. As I reread that now, um, the co-signing by the principal um, did not occur until after the incorporation documents uh, were there. I believe that his original employment was under the time that we were working under the Religious Accessories and Charities Act or something like that and uh, that would apply to the reissuing of all staff contracts when those things would have come into place. All right now um, <coughs> we've sought but not been provided with any of those documents that um, that are mentioned there in the third paragraph and I, I apologize to Mr Woods I haven't raised it with him but do you have copies of any of those documents, the responsibility description, the code of conduct or the staff handbook? No, I do not. Have you seen any of those documents that date from the period 1983 to 1992? The documents I have seen, as I've read information as uh, reminded me of these things, were that um, Principal Rooks, who by that time had become very involved with Christian community schools, and also our incorporation documents required a reissuing of contracts, put together a, um, a draft uh, which came back to me. We worked on it and we put that draft before all the teaching faculty at that time and asked them, did they have any comments on the, the way this was proceeding? I think five of the teachers responded to that. And as a result of that, the new contracts were uh, drafted which would fulfil the uh, requirements of the incorporation documents. All right. So and that's both for church and school, all you, staff. And do you think that uh, Mr Sandland's contract was ever updated to take that into account, or was he reliant on the old position? Every staff member were reissued with contracts. OK. And myself included. And were these written contracts? I'm sorry? These were written contracts? Written contracts, yes, written and signed. All right. In the Code of Conduct... Um, just because we don't have a copy of it, can, can you recall at least um, the general provisions in that code of conduct? <coughs> Basically, we were a Christian school and we wanted teachers to teach with a Christian ethos and live what they taught before the people. That would be a global response. I could not give you the details of it. Right. It wasn't specific as to conduct towards children, is that right? I would think not in a contract, no. <coughs> All right. Um, <coughs> take you to a document, this one's uh, Tender Bundle 6, it's a document addressed to you from um, Mr Ellery, sorry, it must be Tender Bundle 5. See this appears to be a memorandum to DVS, which I presume is you. That is me, from the principal. From KE, which is Mr Ellery, the Correct. then principal. Is that right? Yes. All right. Um, now, we've been through... Have you read this document? I have. Yes. Um, and you'd agree that it relates to concerns about Mr Sanderland's behaviour? Yes. And that uh, Mr Ellery reaches the position, he says, that at the moment the situation is one of no case, yes. or at least no case proven. Yes. Do you recall what the allegations were which led to this particular document? 
I think it was hugging children at that stage of the game. That's, that's my best recollection of that. All right. Do you remember any more detail about the nature of the hugging? No, I don't. And um, did you ask Mr Ellery to establish what the nature of the hugging was? I think Mr Ellery's... Sorry. Yes, Mr Ellery's response to me was that it could be perceived to be wrong. And on those perceptions, he made his report. All right. Now, you see at the start of the next paragraph, it says, in the context of past ripples, it's very important to advise that whilst it would be our <laughs> desire and hope to defend him to the hilt, any appearances of imprudent relationships would provide... Can't read that. If we just scroll down a bit more. Difficult to defend him to the extent we would like. Do you see that? I do. That issue of past ripples, do I take it from that that there had been earlier allegations made against Mr Sanderlands of some form of inappropriate conduct? Not to my knowledge, no. I do not know what those ripples were. All right. When you read this in 1986, do you ask Mr Ellery, what are the past ripples that you're talking about? I think it was a, a practice he had of this continuing to, to hug or to have children walk around them with hand on hand in his hands and so forth. And I think it was more of the perception of behaviour that he was referring to there. Um, what, he underlines the word appearances. All right. Well, what were the past ripples to your understanding? I have no idea. Did you ask Mr Ellery what they, what well, they were? Well, I have no idea. I think it's what I just mentioned a moment ago, that he was too close to the children. All right. Were there, was there any policy or procedure in place at Northside Christian College in 1986 that governed um, the physical touching of children? Not to my knowledge, unless the principal had something. I didn't see it. All right. And were you aware that in 1986 that there, that there was... it was inappropriate or there was some form of prohibition upon the cuddling of or hugging of children at the school? I was not aware of anything in, in the legal field. Um, the principal informed me that teachers should keep a good distance from students, and that was basically my knowledge of it. When did he, when did he advise you of that? That would have been part of this conversation. <coughs> All right. So let's wind back from, from this slightly. When did you first hear of these allegations that Mr Ellery is investigating? Um, with this has, memorandum. Were you not aware? Sorry, if we can just scroll back up again. You'll see there that there's no, uh, there's no preface, there's no introduction to this particular part of the memo. It simply says, in our contact with him, it would seem important to avoid by innuendo seeming to impute any culpability on his part and so forth. Do you see that? I do. It seems to be an implication there that there was some form of communication between you and him about those um, matters which are the subject of the memo. With be... respect, I, I cannot interpret what was in his mind by, by saying that. I'm not asking you to do that. What I'm asking you is to assist the Royal Commission, if you can, as to whether yes. there was any previous communication between you and Mr Ellery prior to this No, memorandum. this was the first communication, and I would focusing on this, that the situation is one of no case, so I respect the expertise of the principal in that matter. Um, and you're saying you had no contact with the principal prior to the 30th of December 1986? No, I said I had no contact with the principal on this subject prior to that memorandum. And this is dated... Um, during the um, Christmas New Year break, when I presume the, the whole of the college was on summer holidays, is that not right? That would be if, if that date is correct, yes. Why, why was it the case that um, Mr Ellery appears to be investigating this matter and writing you a memo um, two days before New Year's Eve? I have no idea. I can only go to the fact that that's when I received it. In any event, you understood as a result of receiving this that there were allegations about 
appearances, if we just scroll down, please, of imprudent relationships with children. Did you understand that? I understand that this was the first time I had been made aware of any allegation. And what did you direct should happen as a result of these appearances of imprudent relationships? I presume I, res I have responded to that in, in a memorandum. I'm not too sure, though. My stylist would normally respond to these things. Well, sir, unfortunately, we don't have any response to it. Do you recall what you did in response to this memorandum? Well, my response would be to accept the principal's um, conclusion that there was nothing that was um, valid in his mind, but that he is going to uh, speak to the teacher to say that watch yourself and don't be put into a position where there could be any appearances of imprudent relationships. Did, you, did it occur to you that there may have been an appearance of imprudent relationships because there was, in fact, an imprudent relationship? with the children? <laughs> no, because I accepted his integrity that there was no case. Well, no case proven. No case proven. So you took it by that qualification that there may have been some basis for the allegation, but that it didn't reach an appropriate standard to be proven. Did you understand That's that? That would be correct, yes. yes. All right. Now, if you can go over to Tinder Bundle 6, um, on the 20th of March, 1987, there's a memo to DVS and LEOE. -E. Are you able to assist us with what that stands for? The, he was the bursar at that time. What his was name his name? Ellis, e -L -L -I -S. Mr. Mr. Ellis, is that yes, correct? Yes, Mr. Ellis. All right. Um, <laughs> And uh, this is a memorandum you received about that date? Correct. And it related to um, allegations made by three grade five, six girls about Mr Sandland? Yes. And the allegations were that um, a child had been on his knee, that is Mr Sandland's knee, and yes. he was touching her on the lower stomach area and on her legs. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, had you known at that stage of um, any concerns about Mr Sandlands having children on his knee? Again, this is the second time I have now received information. Uh, nothing in between that time. This is the second time I've been informed by memorandum. Now, you said there was some issue about cuddling that you thought was the subject of the... <laughs> Uh, memorandum in December of 1986. Was it also the case that um, Mr Sanderland's having children on his knee was of concern at that stage? The principal is, ex is expressing that to me, yes. What are you referring to in that memorandum? Well, the memorandum is not coming from me. It's coming from the principal to me. I understand that. And so I am being made aware of information I did not have previously. Yes, OK. Well, I'm asking you to cast your mind back to that period in 1986-87, and um, I'm asking you whether you recall um, any concerns being raised with you about Mr Sanderland's having children on his knee in, at that time. Only through this memorandum, to which I think I responded to fairly quickly. All right, so the reference to having a child on his knee was... Uh, this was the first time that you'd read that particular part? Yes. And you'll see at the... Uh, there's also reference to Mr Sanderland's asking children to express their verbal love for him. You see that? <laughs> yes, I do. And uh, that was a point of some concern from the principal? Yes. Um, and that he also said that Mr Sandlands had been warned about his actions? 
my presumption is that it's a reference that the principal received from Mr. Sandler's personnel file, where this other information would have been recorded. All right. Um, is that not the, um, the 1986 um, memo that you received from Mr. Ellery? Is that not a reference to that? It could be. My presumption is it could be. And there's a suggestion that there be another severe warning, probably in writing. From the principal. Well, it doesn't say that. It says another severe warning. Are you suggesting that um, it was not I can't appropriate? See that. I'm sorry, I cannot see that. Yes, yeah, sorry. One, two, three, the fourth paragraph there, the second sentence of that paragraph. Another severe... OK, the principal is recommending to me another severe warning, probably in writing, would seem necessary. Yes, yeah, so you were the one to provide that severe warning, were you not? I believe I requested it to be further investigated. All right, from, we'll, come to that in, we'll come to that in a moment. Yes. Um, and Mr Rooks is really quite concerned about the potential damage to the school's reputation if alleged incidents such as these are allowed to continue. You see that? I do. Yes. Um, and he says, if any future such incidents were able to be proved undeniably, then I would have no hesitation at all to recommend instant suspension and dismissal. Yes. Do you see that? Sorry, you'll need to say yes or no. Yes, I said, I'm sorry, I said yes. Um, not at all. <coughs> and um, Now, Mr. Mr Rooks at this stage was new to the school. He had served as a teacher for a period and then had become the principal. But he was new to the position of principal in 1987, is that right? Um, I cannot tell you the exact date he became principal. Yes. Um, it appears to be the case. Certainly we have uh, a document from 1986 under Mr Ellery's hand and then three months later we right. have a, a document under Mr Rook's hand. Okay. So it's reasonable to assume by, yes. by this stage that he was the principal. Yes. Um, and he's stating quite strongly that if future such incidents um, are to occur that there should be instant suspension and dismissal. Do you say that? No, I don't think he said that. I said if they were to be proved undeniably... <coughs> yes, if they were yeah. proved undeniably, yeah. then that action would take place. Yes. All right. And the type of matters... He refers to such incidents as the one above, namely placing a child on his knee and touching her on the lower stomach and on her legs. So there's... From this memo, sorry, you'll need to say yes or no. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Um, there was no specific allegation of direct contact with the genitals, for example, of the child. I had no knowledge of that. Not from this. There memo. was nothing in this memo that no. referred to that. Correct. Um, but that Mr. Rooks, nonetheless, was taking the position that if such things were to occur in the future, then instant dismissal was the appropriate option. That was his recommendation, yes. Yes. And did you um, agree with that recommendation? I did. All right. Now, in that last paragraph, he says he would welcome any future input on this long-standing situation with which I am only recently acquainted. Do you see that? Except it says uh, any further input, rather future than future. He was asking me now for some advice from the bursa and, him, and myself to come back to him. Because he understood that there was a long-standing situation with respect to Mr Sanderland, wasn't it? Again, my knowledge was only that one memorandum from Mr Ellery. Well, it appears to be the case... Sorry, I withdraw that. When you received this memorandum, did you speak to Mr Rooks and say, what is this long-standing situation? I do not think I did. I believe my immediate response, following what I consider was the laws of jurisprudence, that the matter be fully investigated. Yes, well, that was with respect to the current allegations, the ones in March of 1987. But what did you do to satisfy yourself as to what the long-standing situation was with Mr Sandler? My understanding of the long-standing situation was the, the previous situation that 
uh, had been brought to my attention by Mr. Lowry. An allegation that um, was referred to in a memorandum some three months earlier in December of 1986. Are you saying that that alone was the long-standing situation? I would say yes. I, I can't. I did not ask for interpretation of long-standing, but it had evidently, in Mr. Rooks's eyes, occurred before he assumed the leadership. Was it not wise? Sorry, I withdraw that. There was the possibility, wasn't there, that in the nature of the activities that Mr. Sanderlands was engaged in, that he was, there was some form of sexual contact with children implied by what was occurring? I would only say that now that I have read information after I had left all of this and seen what I have seen, one could construe that, but at that stage, I was not construing anything of an overt sexual nature. Touching her on the lower stomach area and on her legs, are you saying that that did not imply the possibility of some sexual contact with the child? I would say now it would have to certainly do that, but I was being, again, guided by the, uh, the educators, the principal, as they would know what is right and what is wrong. Did it not occur to you at the time that that sort of contact may well have been sexual contact with a child? No, it did not, because I believed better of my staff at that point of time. Now, we're talking about... You knew at that stage that Mr Sanderlands was teaching grades 1, 2 and 3 um, at the college, didn't you? If that's what the record shows he was teaching... Well, there's, uh, there's been quite a bit of evidence that he was teaching those, including from Ms Furlong, during those years. Do you accept that he was teaching one, one to three at that stage? I presume that would refer to a composite class. I would have to accept that if that is what the record shows. I have no knowledge of that. And so grades one to three are children of the age of six to... about six to eight years old, depending on yes. when they're born. And that Mr Sanderlands was a fully grown man. Yes with uh, hands the size of a man? Yes. And you'd agree that if a man was to place his hand on the lower stomach of a child, that would be very close to the genital area of the child? I would have to accept that possibility, yes. And yet it did not occur to you in March 1987 that that was a possibility, that Mr well, Sanderlands had um, engaged in some form of sexual act? Correct, and my initial reaction was to get further information to check it out. Is that a suitable time, Your Honour? Yes. So we've reached the end of the sitting day today. Uh, Pastor Smith will return, and you'll be required to return at 10 tomorrow. For Thank you, Your Honour. Thank you. Awesome.